trying to adjust my screen, but it keeps putting messages over my mouse. Okay, there we go. Looks like we're all here, yes? Yes, all right. Okay, uh, we're all here. I'd like to call to order the Malibu Planning Commission regular meeting of January 18th, 2022. Here's the go. Um, this meeting is being held by teleconference due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Commissioners and city staff are participating in the Zoom meeting from remote locations. All votes will be taken by roll call. Members of the public can participate in the meeting or watch it by going to malibucity.org slash virtual meeting. At that screen, click on one of two tabs to either watch or sign up to speak on particular items. Those wishing to speak must be present in the Zoom meeting to be recognized. Please sign up before the item has been called by the chair. Those wishing to defer time to someone else intending to speak are not required to sign up, but must be present in the meeting. Now, this is new language, so guys, just vet this and tell me if it's anything wrong with it. Typically, speakers are allowed three minutes each. However, if many people have signed up, each may be granted less time to speak at the discretion of the chair, who will specify the time allowed before any speakers are called upon. When someone chooses to defer their time to someone already intending to speak, that speaker is allotted one additional minute. The one deferring gives up the entire balance of their allotted time. A speaker may accept up to five additional minutes from five deferring non-speakers for a nominal total of eight minutes. Alex, do you have a slide there to show us? All right. Uh, at the start of public comment on an item, the chair will ask members of the public wishing to defer time to raise their hands using the reactions button. Each person will be called upon to verify their presence in the meeting and their intent to defer time. Once called, please lower your hand. Commissioners, when you have comments, please raise your hand and I will call on you in turn so we can make our discussion clear for the record and for the public. May I have a roll call, please, Rebecca? Commissioner Jennings. He's here. here. Commissioner Maza. Here. Commissioner Wetton. Here. Vice Chair Smith. Here. Chair Hill. Here. We have and a quorum. Thank you. And uh, an approval of the agenda. I think we wanted to shuffle things around, maybe. John? I, I move that we... Uh... Put items 7A through 7M before 4A. Uh, does someone want to second that motion? Dennis, is that a second? No, actually, it's not. Um, it's on, can we do that? On, where are they? Well, hang on. Let's 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 address John's motion first, and if it fails, then. Well, it's not that. I have to recuse myself on New York's on Rambla Vista. Okay. So um, I want to put that last if we uh, may, uh, Chair Hill. Okay, I will move that. Well, I will move that. I will change mine to move that last. Now, do we have a second for that motion? I'll, I'll, I'll second it for the sake of a vote. Uh, okay. Here, let me suggest. Um, it's a, I certainly agree with the idea we ought to move. Uh, 7A through 7M forward before the local coastal plan amendment. Uh, but we've got a lot of people who have been waiting for multiple meetings to get heard. And I would put, uh, I would put them after 7B uh, or after, I'm sorry, they, I've moved 7A and M to uh, after 4B rather than before 4A. And as far as the York's thing is concerned, um, they've been waiting a long time too. Uh, so I think that uh, I would just have to suggest that uh, Dennis, you go watch TV for a little while, and uh, okay. we'll, we'll call you back. That would be right. my Very suggestion. Good. So, uh, so, so, uh, John, what do you think, John? You can take it as a friendly amendment, John, or do you want me to? I'm a little bit confused. What you're doing is putting the. Okay. I, I'm moving. I'm moving. Um, seven A. Yeah, it is a little confusing. I'm moving seven A and M to uh, before 4D, but after 4A through C. And so, Commissioner Jennings, I just want to be sure that that's 7A through M, correct? Not just 7A and M? 
correct through him. Right. Well, I I don't quite agree with that because I was told by Patricia this afternoon that all the people from 7 a to M are here to speak. And that's a hell of a lot more than what I think is going to happen on 7 a, B, and C. Well, I think, all right, if you're, I didn't have that information, but it's really, we're splitting hairs here, I think. If you want to move it to 7 4, I'll go along with that. Let's 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 put them all at the front and try to get through them quickly. I have a, at least one idea that will help streamline it. Okay, but we're talking all at the front and then moving yards to the back. That was the motion, right? That's what Dennis second. Correct. That was the motion. Okay, so right, and and my objection to that is that the Yorks have been waiting a long time. If we put them to the back, we probably aren't going to get to them tonight. Well, have they been extended? I, I, don't, I don't think we've heard this one before. We have continued it. Extended. Yeah, we have continued it. I would I would suggest that we do it. I think as Jeff is suggesting, and leave the ADU stuff for the end because then we won't be feeling like we've still got somebody on the back end that we have to get to. So if Dennis goes along with it, moving uh, 7A to 7M first, and then after, after, uh, well, no, and then we just do want to move uh, the orcs after 4C. They are 4C, aren't they? Yeah, so we're yeah. not them at all, just moving the first ones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dennis, do you accept that? Um, sure. Okay, we, we got a motion now. Okay. Right. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Maza? Yes. Commissioner Chair Hill? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Vice Chair Smith? Yes. Commissioner Wetton? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Um, can we please have a report on the posting of the agenda? The agenda for this meeting was properly posted on January 7th, 2022. All right. Thank you, Rebecca. And I believe we're now on to item 2A public comment. Is that accurate? Um, yep. Um, what, what, what kind of uh, crowd do we have here? I haven't looked at anything. Rebecca? The first speakers are Ann and John Payne. Okay. And approximately how many speakers do we have? Um, we have one more in addition to them. Okay. For this section. Okay, great. So Ann and John Payne together. Um, together you have three minutes. Are you there? I don't see them in the meeting, but they may be under a different name. If you're in the meeting and under a different name, if you could raise your hand using the reactions button. Uh, I don't see them. Um, the other person who has signed up to speak at this time is Jeremy Walker, and he is in the meeting. All right, let's try him. Can, uh, excuse me, can we get rid of the waiting for an active item thing so we can see everybody? There we go. Thank you. Jeremy, are you here? Can Can you, are you there? His hand is up. I, yeah. I'm here in sound. Okay. Yeah, that's all you get. You get to talk to us for three minutes. Well, I don't want to take up that much time. I just want to say uh, John Maza brought up uh, the idea of goats as a way to uh, restore this fire break that was built back in the 50s. I heard about it on KBUU. I hope you'll read my letter that I submitted. And if there's any way I can help move this idea forward, I want to put myself up to be a contractor to administer it, explore it, take a look at the uh, land and the fire break, report back, uh, and if there's anything I can do to move it along, I think it would be great for Malibu, uh, and I think it would be uh, uh, one of those really special things we could do without environmental impact, but with a lot of, uh, of planning for the future. All right, guys, thanks for everything you do. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, is Ann and, and are the pains back in yet? No? 
I'm not seeing them, so there are no other public speakers at this time. Okay, well then with that, we go on to item 2B, planning commission and staff comments and inquiries. Any planning commissioners? Uh, Jeff. Yeah, my only comment to your added verbiage is that if we reduce um, speaker's time, that's usually at the pleasure of the commission as a whole rather than just the chair. But other than, other than that, it was fine. And as far um, as GOAT, as far as goats are concerned, um, this is an idea that we've talked about for many, many years. And the, the, uh, apart from the logistic problem of goats themselves, the problem is that uh, the public agencies that own the land to the north of us are entirely unwilling to uh, have us eat their vegetation or clear their land. So uh, it's never been an idea that's gotten very much traction for that reason. But um, John, if you're on it, uh, go ahead. Okay. Go, John. Uh, Jeremy, the, the reason I suggested goats is basically I was following the plan that Laguna is actually doing. And there could be other methods. Uh, that seems to be the easiest for rough terrain. As far as Jeff's comment about public agencies around us, somehow Laguna got around it. Most of their clearance is in in uh, public agency land. So that's a matter for, well, and, and, and most of it's also not in our city. So that's a matter for uh, the administration of the city to figure out how to do it. All I can tell you is Laguna is being very proactive and the people love it. And that's basically my comment. Okay, uh, any other comments? Well, I wanna add one thing. I don't know anything at all about sprinklers. So uh, everybody thinks I'm running around pushing sprinklers in the mountains. That's Don Schmitz knows about it. I don't. I've read his thing once two years ago and they work, they work. If they don't, they don't. So you're basically saying you have an open mind. Um, anyone else comments? I'll just make a comment an observation and a bit of news that with no particular opinion attached, but um, I guess the question would be, where do we stand lately with the uh, wireless facility applications and do we have a bunch of them coming soon? This, this would be a question for uh, Adrian, but before getting to that, let me just say the news. Um, some of you may have heard that a bunch of the major airline companies have just uh, through the FAA have protested uh, cell companies putting 5G within two miles of a number of major airports because the 5G apparently interacts with the altimeters on airplanes. They're, they use the same frequencies. So suddenly we have a big battle between the FCC and the FAA trying to sort out who needs to change their frequency spectrum. What I thought was interesting, uh, just kind of an open-ended question is, we know that there are certain potential health effects of 5G we know there are some probably bogus claims and there may be some that are more legitimate, but we've been told the whole time that basically the field effect drops off exponentially. So it's really only within a few feet of a tower that you might possibly be concerned about something. The fact that they're concerned about it within two miles of an airport, uh, it, it seems like the question might want reconsideration. And I'll just leave it out there for, for people who wanna go look up the news. Um, John? I just maybe Adrian could tell us or somebody. Um, when we first started doing these telephone polls and trying to figure out FAA rules and all this stuff, there was talk of a telecommunications commission pre screening these things for us. There's also talk of an expert pre screening these things for us. And I guess. I haven't, I don't really see any movement there. Uh, is there any? Um, also comment on what you said, Craig, I think we are precluded from uh, discussing health effects of uh, 5G. Nonetheless, it, 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 I'm not suggesting we, we will talk about it, just a piece of news. But your question to Adrian is essentially my same question. Like wh where are we with all the rest of that? All right, I guess I should answer the question. Um, 
we have we we don't have that many applications open um we have a lot of applications that have been inactive for many years and uh, at some point um if we have the staff uh we'll start uh sending out closure letters and start closing a lot of those applications since they again have been inactive for for several years now uh in all um we have a about 40 applications are open. Um, and like I said, I, I'd say the majority of those applications are inactive and um, they're probably not uh, planning to pursue them. We have seven open applications um, uh, that were recently submitted that um, are now using the, the new uh, wireless permits or the wireless right-of-way permits that uh, we now issue uh, based on our new ordinance. And uh, that's just seven applications. So um, uh, I know that uh, some of you uh, were expecting um, a lot of applications to flood the planning commission. Um, it, it's just, uh, uh, it's not happening. Uh, we don't expect that. And, you know, and I think um, what the new ordinance is doing is, uh, I guess, it's doing uh, what it was designed to do, which is really discourage applicants or wireless carriers to actually submit applications. Hmm. So um, we are getting less applications submitted. Um, and uh, a lot of the applications that we do see and part of a large part of the number that I gave you, the 40, uh, is just upgrades to existing facilities. All right. Thanks, Adrian. John? Uh at one time, we were told by somebody that uh, because 5G is essentially a 500-foot broadcast, and what we have now is a 1,500-foot broadcast, that if you put all the telecom companies together, we were going to get about 190. Is that, do you think that's, we don't have the applications because they're off doing LA instead of us, or, or they've just dropped 5G from Malibu? Um, yeah, it, it hasn't been um, something that the carriers have been interested in doing uh, for the city yet. Uh, so uh, we have not seen any any 5G applications uh, submitted. It was all 4G uh, uh, applications that we received from Verizon, um, which was the one applicant that had a lot of open applications with the city. Um, but yeah, it usually takes time. It usually, like, like you mentioned, uh, Commissioner Maza, it, it usually, uh, you see um, the new technology being uh, employed in uh, largely urban areas. Uh, and then eventually uh, they, they trickle to uh, the less uh, urban areas. So uh, we might see some of that in the next uh, three, four, maybe five years from now. Um, and we might see more facilities or we might just see the replacement of existing infrastructure. And since, since again, our code is, is designed in a way that uh, makes it very difficult for um, applications to be submitted and processed by the city. All right, thanks, Adrian. Um, okay, any other commissioner comments? No? All right. Um, so we've done public, we've done nothing on the consent calendar. So uh, by the way, we've reordered the schedule. I believe that means we're on to item um, the extensions, items 7A and sequence. Oh, do you have something, Patricia, you'd like to staff report? No? I believe you were going to go over how you would like to proceed with these items before I begin, perhaps? Yes, 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 yes. Um, okay, so I had originally thought that there'd be maybe a way that we could consolidate some of these in a way and, and sort of analogous to doing the consent calendar. Um, having talked to several people, it seems like that might be difficult. So I, I think we're just going to have to click through them one by one with a few efficiencies built in. The first one would be that, well, and just for everybody out there who's looking to participate, Everybody will have an opportunity to uh, speak on their particular item. You'll have up to three minutes. Um, one thing that I think we can, can streamline this is that uh, up front, I can just mention a lot of these cases have commonalities in terms of what the unusual circumstances might be. 
and if we if I just state a few of these up front, we can re we can refer to them. We have them in the record. Um, they may be applicable to one or more of the items following, so we don't need to keep repeating and and uh, coming up with new documentary evidence for each item. So I, I, they, to me, they seem to fall into about three categories, one being health issues such as uh, stress and PTSD, et cetera, something like that. We'd want a doctor's note or something similar. Number two is some people waiting on Ed Edison settlement money. Number three, COVID slowdown, supply chain blockage issues. Um, so uh, Patricia and I and, and some other staff have went through and, and she helped find some formal orders that basically articulate these un unusual circumstances for us. Um, with respect to supply chain, there's a White House executive order of February 24th, 2021. Based on that executive order, Governor Newsom issued an order regarding supply chain issues. Um, by analogy, AB 1651, provides for an 18 month extension of housing entitlement approvals. Um, on the COVID medical side, in terms of unusual circumstances, we have the LA County public health orders, stay at home orders. Most recent order was January 11th. Um, with regard to the, well, the state also passed AB 1561, which allowed for any project. Oh, I, I read that one already. Okay. Um, and then with respect to uh, Edison, their 2020 annual report refers to the Woolsey subrogation settlement. Uh, they agreed to pay by April 22nd, 2021. There are also other claims that they uh, agree to pay on or before July 15th, 2023. So we've got we've got some official documentation that there's uh, Edison settlement mon settlement money out there. Um, so we've got those sort of backstopping us in terms of justifying due cause for unusual circumstances. And then let's lo we'll look at each case. Um, John, you have a question? Yeah, um, it's my understanding that every one of these is going to come back as a resolution. And um, will will that resolution contain the standard references you just mentioned on each one? Which one applies? I think the thought that is that yeah, we could put that we could either just decide now to globally as a whole integrate the list that Patricia has, or uh, we could be more specific and say, well, these particular cases only we're concerned about SCE, so we won't only put those in. Or I, I don't know if that's that's up to the commission's discretion to how how specific we want to make each one. Well, I I think we would want to put in what we have a letter from each applicant stating what their reasons are, and I think Patricia can just pick those reasons and state them in the resolution. If somebody asks for PTSD, put that one. If they ask for PTSD and SCE, put them both in. Yeah. That kind of deal. Because we are making resolutions on each item and we are making these these findings or whatever they call them. So I think that'd be we could leave that up to Patricia to because we're going to review them at the one of these meetings. If she makes a mistake, we can fix it. Uh, yeah. but we don't have to sit here and discuss it on each item tonight. So not as much cut and paste as you'd like, but um, not that many items anyway. So um, with that, let's go to the first one, um, 7A. This would be extension Woolsey Fire number 21-001, extension of time to submit a planning verification for non-conforming structures and uses damaged or destroyed in the Woolsey Fire. I don't know if I'm going to read those every single time. Uh, at location 6219 Ramirez Mesa Drive. And on each of these items, I'm, I want to ask you guys if you feel like uh, just sort of straw poll or consent, whether you want a staff report on this or whether you want, you just want to have a, if you have a question or two, you want to have answered. We can do that first, and then we'll give the uh, applicant an opportunity to speak. John? Uh, I think on each item, just asking a question and not having a staff report, it's going to get, take a lot of time to have staff report on each one. 
I agree. I assume we've all read them so we can ask the questions if we have them. Right. So on this one, the question is, it sounds like you're suggesting we don't need the staff report. Does anybody have any questions on this one? Yeah, uh, my only question on this one, is, uh, were they original owners or are they, did they purchase it after 2018? And uh, I don't yeah. know if I can ask this, but uh, uh, if it was purchased after 2018, have the fees been paid back to the city? So I would like to make a recommendation on the order of these. I believe a lot of the property owners are going to answer some of your questions in advance. So if it would be possible to call the item, allow public speakers, and then maybe questions. Sure. Well, is that, that okay? I think I, I'd like to give the commissioners an opportunity to ask a question first, but okay. understanding commissioners that we're going to hear from them. So you, you okay. might want to just save your question till later. Greg? Yeah. Might be simpler to ask the question second because hopefully they're going to answer the questions in their three minutes. And the commissioner won't have to ask it. Well, let's, let's, Leave open the opportunity for you to ask one first, if need be. So, with that, I think we've we've probably asked the questions so far, and we can open it up to the public on this one. To the applicant, our first speaker is Parker Lorette. And this is the applicant on the Ramirez Mesa. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Are you there, Parker? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hey. Okay. So, gentlemen of the Planning Commission and Chairman Hill, my name is Parker Larratt, and I'm the owner's representative for TK Tsuma LLC, who suffered the catastrophic total loss of its home at 6219 Ramirez Mesa Drive in Malibu in the 2018 Woolsey Fire. We are the original owners. Our request is for an additional extension of time to submit our plans for the rebuild of like kind status. By way of background, I'm the owner's representative and I'm currently finishing up my graduate's degree at Pepperdine University. I've been working with the original owner of the property to facilitate the insurance recovery and work with the various experts, adjusters, appraisers, and the lender to preserve the property during the legal and insurance delays due in part to the pandemic and the sheer number and volume of property loss. We would like to request a total of a three-year extension this is in order to ensure there is sufficient time to submit and resolve the SoCal Edison litigation, as mentioned, obtain a new construction loan and building plans, and obtain permits for our rebuild process in compliance with all regulations. After the 2018 Woolsey Fire destroyed our property, there has been no shortage of substantial legal and financial delay and hardship. Uh, the dealings have been continuously delayed, and we are ongoing with the property lender, the insurance company, our HOA, adjusters, attorneys, and other vendors, as well as our ongoing SCE claims. We continue to make an ongoing, diligent, and good faith effort to address and resolve the financial, legal, and insurance recovery issues that are required in order to rebuild the property. However, we have had no control over these external factors, in particular the legal claims. As the property was a total loss, the time, effort, and resources extended have been extensive. We are the original owners, as mentioned, of the property and just completed yet another forbearance extension with the property lender. This is the third forbearance extension we have had to obtain. We respectfully request this additional time. And thank you again very much for your time and consideration and the work you are doing to support Woolsey Fire victims. All right. Thank you very much, Parker. Uh, do we have any other members of the public wishing to comment? Okay. There are no other members of the public who have signed up for this item. Okay. Um, okay. So back to the commission, John. Yeah. Um, Patricia, three years is, is a, a permissible period of time, correct? Do you repeat uh, your question? Three years is a permissible extension. Is correct. That, is that means if I understand it correctly, they would like to obtain their building permits then by November 8th, 2024. So that would give them time to initiate their planning verification application with the planning department and, and an additional year to obtain their building permits. Unless there are any other comments, I'd like to direct staff to come back with a resolution uh, granting a three-year 
permit extension. Uh, Dennis? Is that going to be across the board, Commissioner Maza? It all depends on what they're, they're asking for. And we're going to have to direct it to staff to come back to us anyway. So yeah, that's, I assume that's, and we can ask Patrick if that's the proper way to do this. Since we're not passing anything tonight, we're just asking for a resolution. Correct. Yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure. I, I, I understand the question, but yes, you, you are correct. The, the resolution will will come back at at, at a at a future meeting in, in, in three years. It, it is permissible under the code. So my question is, did I make a proper uh, motion to refer to staff to come back with with the uh, with the resolution as stated before, including the reasons stated by the applicant? Correct. Yeah, the the the, the, the subsequent re resolution will 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 be one of approval, memorializing you know tonight's conversation and future meeting. You know you, th that's when the resolution will be passed. So the short answer to your question is yes. Dennis, to your question about the timing, uh, somebody might decide they want to go less than three years because if you get a, a grand total of six years for the planning and then the the building permit extensions, they might think, well, let's we might. For whatever reason, we want to save more of that uh, for potential extensions on the, bur the the building permit end. So I don't, I don't know that we necessarily second guess what everybody wants. Um, uh, okay. Jeff, I, I was my thought was our at least our standard two year. At, yeah. At, at anyway. Yeah. But maybe because this of the fire and people are still where they are. Um, maybe Commissioner Dumas's three year thing and and what and what. Uh, Parker just at Mr. Larry had just asked for uh, if we go across the board with a three year, um, I think I think we're probably covering everybody. If they don't end up using it, then they don't use it because they got things going. Hopefully that's the case. But then their potential five year building permit extension is reduced to a potential three year because they've used three of their total six. Right. So they're they're, they're, they're you give them three years. Now you're gambling. They're not going to need as much later on. Uh, Patricia? Um, as to Chair Hill's comment, I have spoken to some fire victims and they're going to really try to make the uh, November 8, 2023 building permit deadline, but they are reserving those six years for that date just in case. So there are some folks that are thinking worst case scenario that they'll need to reserve the entire time until 2023. Hold on, John. Jeff has a comment. Yeah, I'm I'm just trying to figure this out. There's there's two different standards. We have a three year period for getting into planning and a five year period for pulling permits. And so I guess my first question is, uh, in this particular case, are we granting a three year extension of both of those time periods, or is it just the planning verification period that we're extending? That depends on what John, whatever John's motion is. Well, I was going by what was asked for. Well, what was asked for was a one-year extension. So, right? No, I mean the <laughs> the planning permit section of it. I, okay. My understanding of the whole thing was, you go to your permit section, you come back and say, "Okay, I'm ready for my permit section." Then you add your time there. I thought that's well, the way it worked. And, and that, that's my next question. Maybe uh, Patrick or Patricia or somebody can answer it for me. Is it? When it says that the, the staff report says extensions may not total more than six years, um, is that six years for each or six years combined uh, or is six, the statute unclear? Six years combined. combined. Now, when we received most of these time extensions, most people assumed they were only asking for one year to submit their planning verification. However, uh, after speaking to a lot of the property owners, they raised a question and said, can't I just go to the planning commission once and push out my deadline to submit a building permit as well? There's nothing in the code that prohibits them today to ask for that. So um, to ensure that everybody had the same information, I called all the property owners and informed them that they had that option tonight. Um, so they don't have to show up a year from now, two years from now. So just like the owner was saying, he would like a total of three years. So I believe he would like, my understanding would be he wants two years to get his planning verification in 
and then an additional year to submit his building permit. Um, we could write, we could draft the resolution to state that he has until November 8th, 2024 to obtain his building permit. So he would obviously need to submit his planning verification way in advance of that deadline. John? This is a question for Patrick. Uh, this is a hearing. So we have a staff, we have a written staff report. Doesn't it have to say something about the permit? extension in there uh not the planning extension Don't, does the public have to have notice what they're asking for or can we do it on the fly no i mean i i think i think here due to the the the, the subject matter is the extension of time to submit a planning verification if 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 this if this commission wanted to, to similarly extend the building permit i would i would be fine with that okay now the second question would be Say somebody finished six months from now, got their planning permit. Are they still, they only have three more years? Or do they have to, I mean, I, I think Patricia explained that you, you lose something by not using your three years and then only getting three more years. Right, so, so is, is the question baby, basically if they do not use the full amount of the, in this instance, planning, planning verification extension, do they then lose that? So now all of a sudden they're, they're that, that, that final deadline, which Patricia, I apologize for the, for, for forgetting the, the date for the building permit. Does that get pushed up is, is basically what you're saying. Right. You know what I mean? I, I think that, I think that the, if, if, if that's the, if the commission would, would like that to happen, I believe, yes, we can, we, we can draft the resolution accordingly. If not, if basically the, the extension, is, is, is and, and the commission says, hey, we're going to give you X amount of years for the planning verification and then X amount of years for the for the building permit, irrespective of when you pull, pull that planning verification. I think I, I think that, that, that that's up to the commission's um, discretion. But hang on, John. Patrick, I'm a little confused because these are all agenda items for planning verification. I, I, do we even have can we even talk about building permit extensions in front of us? I mean. Yes, I, I I believe so. If you if you read the the, the, the staff report, it, it it basically it talks about both the three and five year periods. Um, however, if the if the if the planning commission felt uncomfortable doing that, that is not to say that that you must. Well, let me ask you a question. Didn't the city council is the one that decided, and didn't they say the time periods and the the types of permits that Patricia just read us? I don't think we can change what the city council said, can we? No, and I was under the impression that that these were meant to be sequential. No, and, and, yeah, that, that, that if if I definitely did, did not mean to say that you guys that should change what the and, and maybe I'm I'm confused by the by the the questions and, and if that's the case I I I apologize if the if the if the if the commission only feels comfortable granting extensions as it pertains to planning verifications that that's that, that that's what 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 should happen that's 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 totally fine. I think that's what's on the agenda tonight. I don't know. So, yeah, John. I, 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 for one, not knowing, not having studied exactly what the city council said, the way I read it was we got to do what, what was applied for and then they get their time after that. And I would hate to have this, make them all come back and do this over again to write another resolution. So I think people will be happy when they get their planning permit and see how easy it is to get the other extension. Um, at that point, I cannot conceive of the city council turning down somebody getting their their permits after they've got their planning permit. Um, so I, I would rather take the risk not delaying this longer by keeping it in planning permit as, as it's stated in the uh, in the different requests, but again, I'm I'm. That was the motion I made. Um, we can vote it down and try something else if you guys I, I, differently. I'm confused because I don't understand how how anybody would know what kind of extension they might need on a building permit if they haven't even if they're not even getting to their PV for another two years. Yeah, so I, I I'd like to continue the 
the way the motion was made, if, if unless somebody has a big objection. If I could say something, I think we should ask the property owner again what they would like their time extension if they meant uh, okay. three years total for planning uh, verification. Yeah, but, but uh, my question would be, and this is, I just want to reiterate this. We could be wrong. We don't have a definitive reading of what the city council allowed us to do right now. And if we're wrong on, what are there, 12 of these or something? We got to do it all over again. Jeff? Uh, yeah, it just putting trying to put together the arithmetic. In this particular case, if the applicant is granted a three year extension for planning verification, he's also running up against a five year deadline for pulling building permits. So if he, uh, this is why I asked the question earlier whether it's a combination of six years, because if we give him three years now and he's running up against that other deadline, now he's used up one of those years for planning verification, which he might have gotten his planning verification within two years and could have saved that to get the extension on the uh, on the building permit. So I would think that just in general, the idea of a two year planning verification extension is probably the most conservative way to go in order to try to preserve as much extension time as possible, even though it may mean that they have to come back to get a, a, a an extension to pull the building permits. I, I agree. Uh, I'll, 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 I, agree. I'll, I, I, I agree with you. I'll amend my motion to be two years instead of three. I think the process of getting the extension is so easy that you better you should we you should err on the side of conservatism if you're applicant uh, because you can once you run against that final year you're dead start over again. So, okay. uh, I, so I, if, I don't know who seconded mine. I, somebody's got to accept that. I think your recommendation is staff's recommendation then. Two years, right? Two years, yeah. So uh, do we have a second for that? I'll second it. All right. Um, and and let's, let's, let's in, indeed make sure that it is easy. So let's keep this moving. Um, can we have a, a roll call on that? Commissioner Maza? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Wetton? Yes. Vice Chair Smith? Yes. Chair Hill? Yes. Okay. Motion Com passes. Um, thank you, Rebecca. Now we are on to item 7B. Um, there we are. Uh, an, another, uh, this is extension Woolsey Fire number 21-005. Similarly, it's extension of time to submit a planning verification for non-conforming structures and uses damaged or destroyed in the Woolsey Fire at 33505 Pacific Coast Highway. Owner is the Kotler Family Trust. Um, do staff, do you have any questions before we open it up to them? I'm seeing none. Uh, uh, John? Well, I would just like to know if they asked for one or two years. That so, they can be specific. Yeah. Okay. So uh, opening that up by who do we have here? Do we have Kerry Co or Kirby Kotler, I imagine? Yes. Kirby, are you there? I am here. Howdy. Hey, planning commissioners. Uh, I just want to say happy new year's to you. And thank you so much for hearing our request for an extension. Listen to you guys. And I'm just amazed. You guys have really got a tough load in front of you here. And I really appreciate how you're standing up for all the citizens in thinking of what they're going through. We we did not sustain a total loss. However, we are unique in our loss. Um, we had a neighbor burn down to the west of us and the full debris field of flames and debris coming down on fire on top of our roof and roof decks um, did significant damage, uh, meaning water intrusion. Um, we also suffered the floods afterwards, which is a whole nother ball of wax, but we're asking for a one year extension. Um, we had a battle with our insurance company. We thought for sure it was all going good. They told us they were gonna handle us and it was all great. We saved the other five houses and then they never helped us. And so we had to go into a lawsuit and we finally settled with them about two months ago. So we have money now to make those repairs and now we need to go in and be able to get the permits for that. So I apologize for our delay that's our story, and I appreciate you hearing it. <laughs> Any questions? 
Um, well, Kirby, as I understand it, you're actually living in the house. We are. Okay. I have a question of staff if, if there aren't any other public speakers. Thank you, Kirby. No problem. Uh, staff? My question is, does he need a planning permit to fix his roof and repair his deck? I mean, uh, uh, yeah, planning permit. I think that's for Adrian. So it depends. Um, if the request is only to um, remove the, the you know shingles from the roof, um, they can get a planning uh, approval, an over-the-counter approval uh, with us, and that's it. Um, it. That's a ministerial process. Uh, I think that might be the question, uh, correct, Commissioner Massa, is whether yeah. it requires discretion or not. Um, but it, it also depends on if, if that's all they're doing, um, if they're, you know, um, changing the roof in any way, um, you know, which they can do in order to protect some nonconformities, um, they might need to um, get a planning verification from us. So it really depends on the, on the scope of the work. If it's simple enough, no, but it might be a little bit more complicated than we're thinking. Uh, then the question would be, can we make a motion to give him a year and he can come into planning before it comes back to us? And if he can pull a permit, pull it and just drop the whole thing and have the resolution not come back to us if he withdraws? Uh, Chair Hill, your mic is off. It's weird. Um, I, I, until it comes back to us and is finalized, I imagine he could pull it as a matter of legal process. Okay, so he could. Okay, I'll make a motion to right, right Patrick. Correct. Yeah, the the, the applicant can can pull it at at, at any time and, until it's final. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Kirby, just so you understand, I'm going to make a motion that uh, it gives you a year, but. You might do it in a month. So um, talk to Patricia before she brings it back to us if you want to pull it. Um, okay, I make a motion that uh, we refer the item to staff to make a resolution granting a one-year extension to whatever the date is for 33505 PCH. I'll second it. And uh, Kirby, just, just so you understand that, if you do get to pull it in advance that preserves a greater potential time period for building permit uh, extensions if need be down the road. All right, can we have a vote on this? Uh, just just to clarify, this is a this is a planning approval extension, right? Correct. Can, uh, Rebecca, did I, get a second? did I get a second? You did. Yeah, I, I second it. Okay. Commissioner Maza. Yes. Chair Hill. Yes. Commissioner Jennings. Yes. Commissioner Wetton? Yes. Vice Chair Smith? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Now we are on to 7C. This will be Alford Enterprises for Extension Woolsey Fire number 21-007. Extension of time to submit a planning verification for non-conforming structures, et cetera. Same as the others. Um, do we have any, any quick questions from commission before we go to the applicant? No, with that, let's open up the mic for the applicant. I don't know who we have, but I think Ryan Levis, Levis. Levis, I think. Ryan Levis, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? We can. Good Go Good evening, commissioners. Uh, I want to echo Kirby's comments, and thank you so much for all you're doing uh, for Malibu. Um, I'm the architect representing the Alfred and Snyder family. Um, on both this item, 7C and 7D. Um, interestingly enough, um, on both of those projects, uh, there was an affected part of the home slash property that was a non-conforming condition uh, that which we have not heretofore received uh, PVWFs for. Um, we are <clears throat> in process on both, and we felt it expedient to submit for this extension 
um, in order to sort of cover our bases and allow us to continue to pursue the PVWFs in, in each instance. Um, I can go into more detail if you like. Um, and, you know, essentially on this project, there was a stair that led down the bluff uh, to give them access to Westward Beach Road and ultimately the beach. And <clears throat> during the initial PVWF application, we were asked to uh, bifurcate that component of the project out of the PVWF to seek alternate permits, and we're actively seeking those now. Um, if you'd like, I can discuss 7D uh, in the interest of expediency here, or we can move to it next. But in either case, we would uh, like to ask for the two-year extension if, if we could. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Let's let's not talk about seven. Let's just do these one at a time to be clear. Okay. Um, well, and 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 on that note, I should also add for you and all the others waiting to speak. By no means do you need to fill the three minutes. If you feel like we understand where you're at uh, and you can be brief, that would help us out. Um, John. Yeah, just one quick question, then I'll make a motion. Our our our. Uh, Whoever Alperts or Snyder's owns this property were the original owners before the fire. Yes, they were. Okay, I'm going to make a motion to grant a two year extension for item 7C, which I believe is 703 slash 05 Birdview, um, and uh, ask staff to bring back a resolution uh, giving the reasons for the uh, extension. Can we ask Ryan if if he if the two year is uh, appropriate, or does he want just the one year? Um, you know, we probably, in all realisticness, could get it in one year, but I think um, just given the way that the process has unfolded so far, I, I really would like to err on the side of caution and have the two years if we could. Okay. Okay, the motion holds. Say again? I'm not changing the motion then. It's for two years. Do we have a second? Second. Dennis, seconds. Can we call the roll, please? Commissioner Malza? Yes. Vice Chair Smith? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Wetton? Yes. Chair Hill? Yes. Motion carries. All right, thank you. So now we are on to, again, we've got Ryan there for uh, 7D 33012PCH, uh, extension Woolsey Fire number 21-008, extension of time to submit a planning verification, et cetera. Um, Ryan, did you, you had some specific comment on that one? No, uh, to your comment, I would just uh, refer you all to the letter. Uh, there are more extenuating circumstances in this particular case uh, that obviates the need for an extension request. And I would just refer you to that letter. And you're and, sorry, go ahead. No, and and thank you very much. And you're asking for what what's what's your preferred extension? Uh, we would we would like a two year on this one as well. Good. Okay. Thank you. Um, Unless there's any other questions, I make a motion to Refer item 7D33012 PCH to staff to come back with a resolution granting a two year extension on uh, planning approval, planning permits. No other questions, I see. Uh, Dennis, that's a second no, no, or a question? No, no. I'm just going to second. I second. Okay, that's a second. All right. Uh, Rebecca, can we call the roll, please? Commissioner Maza? Yes. Vice Chair Smith? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Wetton? Yes. Chair Hill? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Now we're, now we're getting the drill here. Uh, we're on to 7E, extension Woolsey Fire number 21-009, extension of time to submit a planning verification for non-conforming structures and uses damage which are destroyed in the Woolsey Fire. 
Uh, this will be at 6234 Cavalry Road, the owner, Carla Bowman Smith. Uh, Rebecca, who do we have in representing these owners? We have two speakers. Uh, first is Carla Bowman Smith. Okay. Carla, are you there? Hi, my husband is speaking for me. Okay. Um, my name is Stan Smith. Um, good evening, and thank you for considering granting us a planning verification deadline extension. Um, Try to make this short and to the point as possible. Um, see, we're, we're longtime residents. In fact, our property was in my wife's family long before she was even born, and we have every intention to rebuild and continue to live here and have our son continue that too. Um, let's see. I think we hit some of the subjects there, um, but we foresee that um, we should be able to settle with Edison because, uh, as many others, we were completely underinsured. Um, anyway, we see that we should be able to settle with Edison in the next four months, but we've already found that a year could easily be added to that, allowing, allowing us to find our budget and submit our planning verification this June or maybe June 2023. But it seems clear that completing construction documents based on that planning verification and going through the plan check process will likely take more than 18 months, easily two years from some other people. We've kind of watched their process. And that means we would might be pulling our permits by June of 2025, as ridiculous as that sounds. So um, I really haven't grasped the, the uh, asking for a two-year extension versus a one-year. Um, and, and it seems that the, there's a five-year deadline um, that you guys don't want to go past, which makes sense. We don't want to take advantage of that. Um, but um, anyway, we're, we're reasonably thinking we can um, we can uh, submit our planning verification in, in six months, um, but it's totally possible to go beyond that. Anyway, thank you for considering this. Okay, so you think you could do it in six months? The, 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 just to, to reiterate, the uh -huh. code allows three, three years for the planning verification or five, and five years for the building uh, permit extension, potentially, but a total of six years total. So. If you take too okay. much, if you take too much on the front end, that doesn't leave you as much potential on the back end. Right. Okay. So, um, if nothing else, I think what we've already we've already found <clears throat> that a year can go by in no time at all. Um, in 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 just because our lawyers, you know, a year ago we thought we were only a month away from being able to for our our case to be submitted, and we're at this point two or three months away. So um, I think it makes sense for a year and a half or two years before our planning verification will be submitted. But I know that it sounds like if we if we ask for two years, then we're actually going to have a shorter period of time to finish the you go through the plan check process. But we really hope we could meet that. And we really don't have any intention of this taking this long. So. It sounds like you're saying you either want 18 months or two years and um, yeah. staff so, recommendation is two years. Um, sounds good. But if, what, what, it's your call, what you're asking mm -hmm. for. Okay. Two years. Two years. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, uh, commissioners, do we have any uh, questions? Yeah, we have one more speaker, I thought. Oh, okay. Well, uh, Carla Bowman Smith, my wife, um, she just deferred to me speaking. Okay. Thank you for uh, streamlining it for us. Um, okay, now I don't see the other commissioners now. So there we go. Thank you. I make a motion to uh, uh, refer item 70 5911. Was it Bonzel? Am I on the right? Cavalry. 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 Cavalry uh, for a two year extension with the, uh, stating the reasons why in the resolution. To come back to us, I think I, I may have mixed that one up, but same thing I said last time. Yeah. And we got a second from Dennis. Can we have a roll call, please? Moving fast. Uh, Commissioner Mazza. Yes. Vice Chair Smith. Oh, Dennis. Yes. Sorry. Commissioner Jennings. Yes. Commissioner Wetton. Yes. Chair Hill. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, so now we are on to 7F. Uh, this will be at 
Yes. Oh, and uh, our public speaker for 7F is Vince Maselli. Okay, this will be for 5911 Bonsall Drive. This is extension Woolsey Fire number 21-010, extension of time to submit a planning verification, et cetera. Um, who, who is speaking? Is this Vince speaking? Are you there? I'm here, yes. All right, go ahead. Well, uh, after hearing the conversations here, a lot of what I was going to say doesn't need to be said. Uh, I would say that, uh, as I understand it, uh, the planning verification uh, can be two years, three years, four years, correct? But when you use that, it works against your timeline to get your building permits, uh, as I understand it. So based upon what I've heard here, I would, we need to have a two-year extension for the planning verification for a number of different reasons that are already stated in the uh, attachment to the application that I gave you folks. Um, and that's my uh, conclusion. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mazzelli. Um, Commission, do we have any questions on this one? I, again, I can't see. There we go. Thanks. Um, if, if there are no questions, then make a motion to grant, to uh, request staff bring back a resolution to grant a two-year extension to item 7F5911 Bonzel, uh, stating the reasons for the request. Okay. And Genesis seconding. I, I sense a pattern here. Can we call the roll, please? Commissioner Maza. Yes. Vice Chair Smith. Yes. Commissioner Jennings. Yes. Commissioner Wetton. Yes. Chair Hill. Yes. Motion carries. Okay. And now we are on to uh, uh, number uh, agenda item 7G. This will be the owner is the William G. Poole Deed Trust or Deceased Trust. I said a Deed Trust, I, probably. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is ex extension Woolsey Fire number 21-011, extension of time to submit a planning verification, et cetera. Um, go ahead. Our speaker is William Poole. William, are you there? Can you hear us? Yes. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, how are you all? Thank you very much for letting me elaborate on our uh, request for an extension. Uh, I want to make a correction right off the bat here. It's going to be... The trust title uh, is William W. Poole uh, for the decedent's trust. Um, we've had a rather complicated uh, set of issues that uh, pertain to settling out our trust after my father passed away in February of 2020. And we are still um, actively wrapping up uh, that settlement and have a court uh, probate hearing in the Superior Court in LA this coming February on the 22nd, which will be our um, first insurance draw, which is a small amount of money that will likely um, help me keep moving forward here. Um, I know my father inquired uh, with the city regarding building permits back in early 2019. However, he started to become quite ill and declined um, thereafter and passed away in February. Uh, we then discovered that some of the assets from my mother's trust had been um, inappropriately titled, and I had to submit what's called an 850 petition to recover those assets. And that's the settlement I'm referring to. So we've had a rather complicated situation for the last two years, but it's, I believe we're wrapping it up and will likely be able to move into collecting insurance from the original insurer. We're still owed coverage from, uh, from them. I think that's going to be quite involved as well. Uh, once that is complete and closed out, we will then pursue the remaining um, difference through the Southern California Edison uh, uh, coverage. What we've, um, let me back up here a little bit. We've, so we've been residents of Malibu for over 60 years. 
This is our family home, and I am determined to get it rebuilt along with my brother and sister. So we are um, planning to rebuild it and live in the home. My brother was in the home prior to the fire. Um, I'm moving as quickly as I can with things, but unfortunately, the insurance situation and some of the issues with settling out the trust have really hindered progress here. And I am respectfully asking for an extension. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure that the two years is going to be adequate to get our planning application in, um, but I'm certainly willing to accept that. I think uh, by the middle of this uh, summer, I will know a little bit more. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, William. Sorry to hear about your father. Um, it sounds like we're looking at staff's recommendation here. Any Which is three years? Two, well, he's, well, he, yeah, what do you, what do you yeah, think? I think he just asked for three years, and that's my question to make the motion. Uh, can uh, Mr. Bullock uh, reiterate that? You want three years or two yeah, well, years? I'm, I'm not. I'm not actually sure what we're going to need. I think my perspective on that will will be a little more synthesized this summer. Um, I I think I'm going to see it around two years minimum for the planning application, maybe even stretching into the first quarter of 2024. Um, we we still have quite a ways to go before we we actually know what we can be doing here. I think it sounds like we want to call it three years, right? Okay, I would I would go with that. Sure. Well, Pat, uh, Patricia, he if he wanted if he thought he could do it in two years, he could come back and get one more year and another extension request. Is that is that possible? Yeah. Okay, so you have that choice also. You, you, if you think you can do it in two years, and you can't, you can come back to us for one more year. Uh, so that's uh, your choice. Your choice. Yes, yeah, so I'd certainly be willing to come back uh, after the two-year period and request another year. Okay, great. Um, any other comments? Okay, I'll make a motion on item 7G to refer 7418 Horizon to staff to come back with a resolution granting a two-year extension uh, stating the reasons for the request. Um, that's it. Second. Second from Dennis. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Plaza? Yes. Vice Chair Smith? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Wetton? Yes. Chair Hill? Yes. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Now we're on to uh, agenda item 7H, extension Woolsey Fire number 21 012, extension of time to submit a planning verification, et cetera. This is at 29350 Heathercliff Road. Do uh, we have Kenneth A. and Carolyn K. Good are the parties? Who do we have here tonight? We have C.K. Good signed up as a public speaker. Okay. Are you there, Carolyn? I do you think they'd be under a different name? I don't see them. I still see William Poole on my screen. Well, his name. I don't know why it's not looking we're just moving too fast for you. Yeah, that'd be us. <laughs> <laughs> so there is no speaker. Um, are there any? A moment. We're trying to see if we can update the screen. Somebody, somebody named Matthew had a hand up there for a moment. Maybe they're, uh, maybe that's their representative. Or want to open Matthew's mic and see who that is? We're on seven H. Hi, good evening. Um, I apologize for that. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Are, okay. you're, you're on 7-H? Uh, yes, I'm, uh, I'm Matthew Good. I'm the legal rep representative and son of Carolyn and Kenneth Good. Um, I, thank you very much for hearing me tonight. Um, I'm also requesting a two-year extension for the PVT process. Um, as the other fire victims know, it's anything that should take a week ends up taking half a year or more sometimes. It's um, been really difficult navigating this process. Um, in addition, we're dealing with a situation at home. My father is disabled. 
and requires 24 seven supervision. Um, I, I even had to move back here from Colorado to take care of him. And then we've had the pandemic um, where we had to pull him out of a nursing home and watch him just my mom and myself 24 seven. Um, getting anything done in this environment and with dealing with insurance and navigating the whole legal process here has been extremely challenging and we are trying to move forward and we have made progress but we would really like to ask for a, a two-year extension if that'd be possible okay thank you uh, staff do you have any questions oh again i can't see everybody yet there we go um john you have a motion if there are any questions i make a motion to uh uh, refer item 7H29350 at the cliff to staff to come back with a resolution granting a two year extension uh, with the reasons stated in their application. Second. second. Second from Dennis. Thank you. Can we have a, may we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Maza? Yes. Vice Chair Smith? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Wetton? Yes. Chair Hill? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And now we're on to uh, item 7i. Uh, this is for 6800.5 Westward Beach Road. This is extension Woolsey Fire number 21-013, extension of time to submit a planning verification, et cetera. Uh, this is the County of Los Angeles. Do we have a representative here? Warren Ontiveros. Yes, Warren. Everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much. Commissioners, I appreciate the opportunity to speak uh, regarding our item. So this is the um, what we call the Point Dew Whale Watch. It's a public access way from um, the corner of Westward Beach and Birdview. It goes up the bluff uh, towards the townhomes, uh, and there's a there's a viewing area that um, it also it also does provide access for the residents down to the beach and was damaged in Woolsey fire. I just wanted to clarify a couple things uh, in addition to what I put in my letter. Uh, the FEMA funding and the SCE settlement are one and the same from the county's perspective. So we are still um, engaged in that process uh, to hopefully obtain um, the line item dollars that were identified in the SCE settlement with the county. And um, so that's ongoing uh, and COVID of course has affected uh, our department's ability to push forward these types of projects. All of, a lot of projects were put on hold because of um, budget concerns at the beginning of the pandemic. And of course it takes time to uh, mobilize again and, and get projects moving forward. So all these, um, these factors, uh, I do want to reiterate our request for two year extension for the planning verification uh, process. And uh, thank you so much for considering our, our request and I'm here for any questions. Okay. Thank you, Warren. Um, commissioners, do we have any questions? Seeing none, uh, we want to move staff's recommendation. John? Well, same on, but is this 7H? Is this? this is, no, this is 7I. I. So the address is uh, what? 6800.5 Westward Beach Road. Okay, uh, I, I move that item 7I, uh, 6800 Western Beach Road be referred to staff to come back with a resolution granting a two year, is it two year extension? Um, yeah. Including the reasons why. Second. Okay, can we call the roll please? Commissioner Malza? Yes. Vice Chair Smith? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Wetton? Yes. Chair Hill? Yes. Motion carries. And now we're on to item 7J, extension Woolsey Fire number 21-014, extension of time to submit a planning verification, et cetera. This is the owner's Helena Properties at 5878 Deerhead Road. I imagine we have uh, Joseph Lazama here. Uh, Greg, yeah. I, I need to disclose that I talked to Joseph this afternoon ah. and um, 
I guess I didn't learn anything that wasn't in the staff report uh, other than some details on the transaction. I, I, material. And I will disclose, I spoke to him briefly too, and uh, there was mention made of difficulty getting steel in time. I don't know if that was mentioned in the report or not. Dennis? Yeah, I spoke to Joseph also uh, yesterday. Okay. I spoke to him as well a couple of days ago. No, I didn't learn anything new. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, me either. Yeah. Likewise. Okay. Uh, all right, Joseph, you did your homework. Uh, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Thank you, Chair Hill and members of the Planning Commission. This is uh, Joseph Lazama. I am the applicant and owner's representative on 5878 Deerhead Road. And yes, I appreciate um, all the time that you guys had for me uh, through the weekend and even today. Uh, I just wanted to reach out and answer the questions that you had ahead of time. I do think it was helpful to explain the situation that this property is in. Um, we are extend, we are requesting a, a two-year time extension for this new owner to obtain uh, planning approval. I feel that that's in stride with the process that I know uh, at the city and allows enough time on the back end to do the building and safety plan check and permitting process. Um, uh, I don't have anything else to to add, so in respect, uh, I want to respect time and uh, kind of give the mic back over to you guys for any questions that you may have with me. All right. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, back to the commission. Any questions, John? Yeah. Uh, my question may or may not be apropos. I don't know, but uh, uh, Joseph, you stated to me today that, that this property has been sold after a permit was issued in August 10th, 2020. And, um, property was purchased in June 2nd, 2021. Uh, my question is, did the new owner pay the city back for the uh, waive permit fees? So since my client took ownership of the property, we've focused on um, a design and engineering for the project. And we haven't approached uh, planning for a revision to that planning verification. I fully expect to pay um, fees as if I'm not entitled to the fee waiver since I was since this property owner was not a direct victim of the fire. Um, so to answer your question, no, we haven't paid any fees for the rebuild of this project. But yeah, well, I, I'm asking Joseph if you uh, not paid but rebated to the city the prior fees for the first application no we have not okay um patricia has her hand up joseph answered the same thing i was going to say that he does not have an obligation to pay the fees from the previous owner if he is not going to pursue the same exact application can i ask uh Mr. Donegan, it's my understanding that when they pass the fee waiver, that any transfer of ownership past the date of the fire uh, to another owner, the, the, that owner would be responsible for the waived fees. Is that correct? Um, off the Commissioner Raza, I apologize off the top of my head. I am I am not entirely sure. Um, I can of course check the the the, the code and then similarly, if if necessary, go back and, and and watch the city council video on that. Um, I believe Patricia was you know her 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 statement was that if it's a different project or a, a different application, that fees are, are 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 not required to be repaid. But off the top of my head, I I don't know, sir. Can I just ask, is this uh, would this resolution depend on knowing that, or is that a severable separate matter that would be uh, settled in otherwise? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think absolutely that the, 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 the two can be severed. Absolutely. Dennis? I would think the new owners can have to pay, pay full till. The city gets back their money. They get, they get fees. So whether, I don't think anybody has to pay anything back. I've never heard of that one. So um, but, uh, you know, the, this guy's going to have to pay full tilt. So well, I guess that's my thought. 
Well, let me just say too, there was an intervening owner too. So this is actually the third owner in the picture. Um, so that it could be that that responsibility might have been from the intervening owner. I don't know. But John, what's your? Well, I'm going to make a motion to approve a two-year extension for item seven J uh, for uh, planning permit and uh, refer to the, to the staff and also refer to staff. Uh, city staff, not necessarily planning staff, uh, the question of recovery of fees to be reported back to us. They can ask. I'll second it. They can ask. This is second it. This is 7K. Uh, Jay. Um, are you sure? Yeah. Dear yes, Henry, 7K. 7J. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, all right, so we have a, a motion in a second. Uh, right. Commissioner Maza? Yes. Vice Chair Smith? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Button? Yes. Chair Hill? Yes. Motion carries. Now we're on 7K. This is extension Woolsey Fire number 21-017, extension return to submit a planning verification for non-conforming structures, et cetera, at 29-6. 36 Cuthbert Road, the Genevieve Labian Trust. Woo! And uh, <laughs> uh, who do we have speaking? We don't have anyone signed up to speak. I'm wondering if there's somebody present in the Zoom meeting that is intending to speak on this topic, if they could raise their hand using their reactions button at the bottom of your screen. People, raise your hand if this is you. 29636 Cuthbert Road. I don't think it's John. I have a John, question. What's your, John, what's your question? Well, since nobody's answering, my question is to Patricia, how many years were they asking for? And if you know, is this the original owner or a owner after December or November 8th, 2018? 18th. In response to your question, in their letter, they do not state how many years they would like for their planning verification, and they are the original. They are the owner that existed at the time of the fire. Okay, I'm going to make a motion to approve uh, an extension for item 7K29636 Cuthbert for one year. Um, and ask staff to report back a resolution stating such for the reason I'll request it for the request. Um, before we get us, uh, Dennis, you wanted to second that? Is that what that was? Uh, yes. Okay. I have a, uh, so we have a motion in a second. I have a question for staff. They're talking here about um, some change with the, the creek flow and um, the strong potential of being overrun with fire debris at any point when it rains in the future. And from the description of it, it sounds like the terrain has changed in some way such that the site can't be rebuilt the way it was. Um, and so my wonder was whether this is a planning verification or whether their the circumstances have locked them into uh, a new design that would involve geotechnical safeguards and a full CDP. Um, John? I just, I should have disclosed, uh, I, I looked it up on Google Earth because I'm familiar with that area. And the entire site has been graded and there's no uh, debris flow on it. So uh, I couldn't get an answer. There's a culvert that goes into the property next door, but I couldn't see where it went into this property. But this is only observation from aerials on yeah, Google we're on Earth. 7 ABC. No, we're on K. Okay. Yeah. Is this the same item? I I believe we got the items mixed up. Oh. We're on 7K-29636 oh, yeah, Cuthbert Road. That's my fault. There were two Cuthberts in a row, and I started reading from my oh, notes okay. on the next one. Okay, so my motion stands one year. Since so to be clear, did, Jeremy, they for, did they ask for two years or one year or, or what? They did not indicate. Okay, so I, without an indication, I think the motion stands. 
And I'll discuss the seven L or whatever it is. Yeah, they can come back. They yeah, set, come back. Set, yeah, my comments were about seven L. Sorry about that. Um, can we have a roll call, please? Yes, uh, Commissioner Maza. Yes. Vice Chair Smith. Yes. Commissioner Jennings. Yes. Commissioner Wetton. Yes. Chair Hill. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, now we're on to seven L. This is twenty nine seven one five Cuthbert Road. Extension Woolsey Fire Number 21-018, extension of time to submit a planning verification, et cetera. Uh, the owner here is Surf Dog LLC. Do we have any dogs in the meeting here? Oh, John? I, I want to make this my disclosure for the prior item, this this item. Uh, so what you saw on, on the Google the Earth was for this item. Yeah, sorry, I, I misled you there. That was my bad. Okay. Uh, do we have a surf dog here? Um there is nobody signed up to speak. If you are here in the meeting and would like to speak on this item, would you please raise your hand using the reaction button at the bottom of the screen? Or wag your tail. <laughs> um, anybody I'm raise not hair? seeing a raised hand. Okay, John. Uh, question of Patricia. Uh, it's customary we know who the applicant is, and I'm sure there's nobody named Surf Dog. Um, do we know who the applicant is and do we know that's who put in the, the request? What, what I have on, on my list is Shannon Sheehan, Citizen Properties Incorporated. Okay. Do we know if that's a, a pre or post fire owner? Surf Dog LLC is the property owner and they were the same owner at the time of the fire. Okay. And then it appears Citizen Properties is representing them, and I did speak to them prior to the meeting. And they're asking for uh, one or two years. They did not indicate. Okay. So I I, st I, ma I made my statement previously about this. It, it sounded like the way they were describing it, that the, the site isn't really eligible for a PV because it had changed so much. Um, and that, that, I mean, this is a question, it's, it's not a statement, but, and John, you're suggesting that it does look buildable? Well, it's flat as a board, uh, it's got a slight slope to it, and there's several acres of flat, it's all graded, so. Uh, so that sort of obviates their their problem, which was that well, they- I think I think they're saying, oh, gee, it might rain again. Uh, I don't know when the Google Earth was done, the property mm -hmm. next door, has a culvert going into it. It's flat. It's been graded also. Everything's clear. Um, so I think all we can do is make a motion for the one year since they didn't apply for anything else. Uh, you're going to need planning approval anyway for anything, uh, unless they plan on a whole new project. Um, and they applied. So I'm going to make the motion to give a grant. 7L29715 Cuthbert, a one year extension for planning approval uh, with uh, staff stating the reason for the application. I'll second. It looks like, though, that a real estate agent is the one that's turned in the, the letter. So hard to say on that, but yeah, I'll see your second of year. Yeah, and I'll just say um, I'm, I'm sort of partly disinclined to grant it just because they haven't showed up and haven't really explained what's going on adequately. But I think to say one year is is sufficient to say, you know, okay, but, you know, they're not here to make the case for more. So let's yeah, go. They burned down on the fire. We know that. So they're eligible. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, may we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Maza. Yes. Vice Chair Smith. Yes. Commissioner Jennings. Yes. Commissioner Wetton. Yes. Chair Hill. Yes. Motion carries. And we're on to the last of these now. This is 7M, extension Woolsey Fire number 21-019, extension of time to submit a planning verification, et cetera, at uh, 5946 Horizon Drive, owners Gene H. and Vicki V. Yavruian. Yavruian, I hope I said that right. Um, who do we have here to speak? Vicki Yavruian. No, oh, I don't see another V. Maybe it's a typo. Uh, there's somebody there, Juliet Hagopian, with a hand up, or is that? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Sorry, 
Hi, uh, this is Vicky Avrian. I'm here with my architect, uh, Armen Hakopian. And uh, thank you for considering my time extension. Um, based on the reasons stated in my application letter, I would like to request a two-year extension if possible. And uh, uh, I guess my architect has a few questions and um, something that he would like to say. Yes, uh, good evening, commissioners. Appreciate the time. Um, it's a heavy load you guys are carrying for the past several years. Um, my clarification is within the two year extension uh, once given, is that something planning um, will approve as we submit within that two year timeline? Um, or is that something that can happen quicker from, or is it just a matter of load from a planning standpoint? And then once that is done, then our allowance to move forward for the building uh, submittal and the timeline, because I had a project off of Ensignal, it took some time to go through the plan check process. And I remember it took us about two, two and a half years, given that there are departments that are not all inclusive within the building at Malibu um, and others, other people were involved um, from a plan check standpoint. So I just wanted to get the clarification on what is the turnaround time for a planning approval for the Woolsey fire victims? Um, maybe that's a question, Adrian, can you address that? Did you understand that? That's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> you promise, Adrian, you promise? I, I was gonna make it just short, but I just wanna clarify it because I've already gone through it once before and I wanna be prepared to, to, to kind of expedite it from my end. And I had a, a tremendous team from from Malibu uh, with, um, uh, you know, from the department head to um, uh, Ms. Doyle and et cetera. Um, and, and you guys are great. It's just that I know it takes time to do this. And I wanna make sure that the owner who's present understands the gravity and the kind of complexity of what we go through in getting approvals. So, um, I didn't want to make it tough on you. So I just want to clarify it. The, the best you're going to get is a ballpark estimate. Adrian? Uh, yeah, even, even even that, I think we're uncomfortable because it, there are a lot of factors, right, um, that are, are out of our control. So, um, you know, the, the fact that you've gone through this before and the fact that you have uh, other agency approvals um, obviously is going to take, uh, is going to help uh, with you uh, to to get the uh, approval faster the second time around, but um, you know it, it depends. Um, you know, a lot of times it's getting the information on the plans correct, uh, and if you were to do that, then the timeline for our review will be much quicker. Um, but in all, I think I think the approvals for fire rebuilds, um, I think, take about six months. Um, if, if, you know, uh, except for, again, when we're not getting the information or when we're not working with, um, you know, architects that um, are providing all the information we're requesting. Thank you. Appreciate it. I just want to just kind of publicly mention that um, I had tremendous help from you guys from the, the last project um, with Yolanda and uh, Lauren Doyle and uh, Marianne. They, they were tremendous in expediting and helping me out. So, I kind of, you know, learned by fire, but they were they were great help. So hopefully, with this project, we can move a little bit faster. And now we've gone through the trials and tribulations of of the past, and uh, we'll make it quick for for everyone. All right, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. I, I have one question for the applicant. Um, how, how, whether how will this affect your timeline, or will it that you? There was some mention that you found neighbors behind the house had encroached onto the property. Uh, that needs some kind of resolution. Does does that affect your timeline, or is that a separate matter? Well, let, I'll kind of answer briefly, and I'll have uh, the owner, Miss Vicky, um, answer her version. Is that it, it, I guess it depends on the 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 friendly conversation they're going to have, and how is that lot line going to be um, either adjusted or used or how the city sees something that potentially wasn't done properly. I'm not going to use another word, but properly. 
and which plays a role in some of the design ideas we've had that may affect partially in parts of, of the program that we have sort of developed or we're developing and we found out that there's an issue there. Uh, all, so, all we all we need to focus on here is the time factor, whether this is going to, whether you need no, to. I, I think, yeah, they, they can, they, it won't affect our time, um, but, you know, I think uh, that's something that can deal with on a legal level. Um, we, we hope that it doesn't affect us. So I think the two year, um, two years given to us will expedite, you know, our need at this point. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, Craig, it may affect them depending on what the setbacks are. And so I'm uh, asking the architect, how much of an encroachment and will the encroachment affect the location of your building versus potential lot line. Um, in other words, if you're 100 feet away from the, the, the say, the, the disputed lot line, it probably wouldn't make any difference. If you're 10 feet away, it'd probably make a huge difference. So um, is this something that will affect where you're going to place the building? Thank you, Commissioner Maza. Um, yeah, the, there is a component to this um, that may be affected, but we um, may be able to move it away in order to potentially, uh, you know, alleviate that problem. If the part, you know, neighbors, my client and a neighbor do decide to adjust that property line, but we have taken into consideration that potentially that could happen. And we may be able to move that program away from the property to, to have the setback requirements met. Okay, uh, Craig, I have another question yeah. for Patrick. Patrick, this application was received after the deadline. And I know when we're talking about, and this may be a question for Jeff because he's been on the council. I know when they set deadlines in code, they're hard and fast. So how do we deal with the fact that it was received on December or November 10th and it was due on November 8th? Jeff, do you have an answer for that? Uh, the actually the ordinance itself speaks to that. Um, I think I put the book away. I was just looking at it, but I uh, know I was looking at my phone. Um, I think it says that that uh, Specifically, that the application has to be made. Um, you know, Patrick, I'm going to have to pull up the language for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm bringing it up right now. And so, and, and, and so, staff, Patricia, is that the 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 application did come in? Was that two two days late? Correct. We received it two days late. And then she followed up with an email stating why it was late. She was having technical difficulties. Now, my hey, question is, can we waive a deadline set by council and, and ordinance? And, and so it, 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 in, in this instance, if, if the, if the, if the commission is, you know, feels, feels comfortable and is persuaded by those, that, that that technical reasoning um, and that the the applicant attempted tried to and the only reason why the applicant was not was not you know successful was due to technical difficulties then then, then I think I think yes it, it, it would it would be appropriate okay um, can I ask the applicant what the technical difficulties were I am not very well with computers and my computer was not working and the gentleman that helps me with it was ill for a week and when uh, he was able to come and fix it, it was, I was a day late. I saw the um, extension time that had passed one day. So that was the reason. Okay, I'm going to make a motion to approve a two-year extension for Item 7N 5246 Horizon uh, and, uh, and have staff come back with a resolution stating the reason for such and uh, stating if this motion passes the fact that the 
Planning Commission accepted, uh, I wouldn't call it a variance, but a deviation from the deadline. Uh, I think Patrick, can, could we call that uh, substantial compliance, something like that, or what would be the rationale? Yeah, I, I, I would be uh, comfortable with that in terms of that there was a, you know, there was a technical difficulty despite the, the applicant's efforts. Okay. So it's, okay, so it's up to us to decide whether it's cool or not. That, that's a question for Patrick. No, well, no. That's correct, a, yeah. That's, oh, that's, yeah, that's it was correct. Vote okay, means. okay. No. All right. I'm combining that with the vote. Okay, I see a second from Dennis. So may we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Maza. Yes. Vice Chair Smith. Yes. Commissioner Jennings. Yes. Commissioner Wetton. Yes. Chair Hill. Yes. Motion carries. All right, thank you. And thank you, public, for all your and applicants for all your comments and uh, help explaining those things. Uh, we're now on to, I believe, based on our uh, reordering, on to item 4A. Is that correct? Yes. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, this is uh, item 4A, Coastal Development Permit, Woolsey Fire Number 19-001 and Variance Number 19-016 an application for the reconstruction of an unpermitted, pre-existing, non-conforming walkout basement, decks, new swimming pool, and associated development, continued from December 6, 2021, at 4756 Latigo Canyon Road, not within the appealable coastal zone. The owners are James and Kim Tomlinson. Um, do we have a staff report, please? Good evening, Chair Hill and members of the Planning Commission. Good evening, uh, Yes. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a CDP for a project located at 4756 Latico Canyon Road. Next slide, please. The property is located on the eastern side of the Latico Canyon Road in the rural residential two acre zone. Next slide, please. The project before you tonight consists of a variance number 19-016 for a basement daylighting more than three vertical feet, a new 1,463 square foot basement where 231.5 square feet will count towards total development square footage, a new 200 square foot swimming pool and spa, 378 square feet of new first floor deck which created 943 square feet of total covered deck area, that also counts towards TDSF, new landscaping, and replacement of the on-site wastewater treatment system. Next slide, please. Here is the site plan. The property is um, currently under construction as a previous home was also was destroyed. Uh, uh, planning verification number 20-008 was approved for an in-kind plus 10% rebuild of the previous single-family home and attached garage. Next slide, please. Shown here are the elevations of the proposed delighting basement. Um, the original house was designed on piles, elevating portions of the lowest floor above grade. Um, sometime between 2000 and 2003, prior to the acquisition of the current owners in 2016, a basement level was built out of the open space beneath the approved structure without the benefit of permits. A variance is requested to allow for the reconstruction of the basement to daylight more than three feet above finished grade in order to maintain the condition of the house at the time of purchase. The basement will not add additional height to the approved residence. Next slide, please. And here are some more uh, elevations of the proposed basement. Next slide, please. And here's the floor plan of the proposed basement. Next slide, please. Here is a rendering of the proposed basement, as you can see below, the first and second stories of the house. Next slide, please. And then in summary, uh, staff recommends that the Planning Commission adopt resolution, it should say, uh, Resolution number 22-05, 
approving CEP WF number 19-001 and variance number 19-16. Um, this concludes my presentation. The applicant and their staff are available for any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Philip. Uh, maybe before we go on to any quick commissioner comments, uh, disclosures? Um, None from Jeff, anybody? John? Uh, yesterday I visited the property with uh, Craig Hill and met with the architect and the owner uh, and toured the property. Uh, at that time, I noticed that the quote basement was substantially completed. It had floors, electrical, walls, doors, windows, um, and plumbing. Uh, which surprised me since we're here to hear a application to do that work. I uh, also looked at the natural grade, noticed uh, existing retaining walls that were below the grade shown on some of the some of the exhibits, especially the exhibits tonight. I also noticed that it appeared that even under the prior rule of how basements were done, uh, more than three feet daylighted on average, I mean, more than 50% of the property daylighted. Uh, I was told by the owner and architect that they had been told to continue construction. Uh, it is in the phase right now that all, all of, basically all that's needed is uh, plaster. Uh, I discussed this with Adrian today, and uh, but I did not discuss it with Philip. Um, and the architect sent a a, 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 a a what do you call it? elevation today, attempting to prove uh, fifty percent above grade. Uh, I don't know if everybody got that or not, but if they didn't, uh, it's in one of the emails. I think we all got that. I think we can talk about that as we get into things more. Um, any any other disclosures? I just originally had talked to the architect back in December. Did you visit the site there? Uh, well, I just drove by. And I didn't see anybody. I went up the hill one day. Okay. Uh, Mark, anything? No, other than I, I did visit the site. Uh, I was not chaperoned by the applicant or the architect. I just uh, viewed it, uh, pulled in, stopped, looked, saw, you know, what was, had been bit done, noticed it was all under construction. So that's it. Could, could, were you able to go all the way around the house or you just could look at it? Uh, only to the extent that I could go without, uh, see what was happening without actually going on the property. You know, okay. I went around. I tried to go around the, both sides and then I pulled the car around the front where the road bends to look back, you know, to see where the, you know, the site for the pool is, is and the, and the basement and all of that. Okay. It's, uh, I, th I thought it was relevant because it's a lot of it you can't see from the road. Right. Um, uh, I, I, John said most of it, I would just reiterate that uh, the old concrete retaining wall on the north side was very suggestive and indicative of of the of a grade uh, whereby the old basement would have been much more than fifty percent daylighting. Um, that was my my impression, and we can we can talk more about the details. Um, uh, questions for staff before we open up the public hearing. Anybody? Mm. Uh, well, we can get into this later, but uh, I'd like at some point a. a to ask staff uh, how the house got to the state of completion that it is without permits for the basement. I mean, let's, let's, okay. We should probably do that when we discuss the details of the basement. Cool. Yeah, they can, we can get that when we're in the flow. I think let's open it up to the applicant and uh, hear, hear their... Yeah. So James Tomlinson is here to speak um, as applicant. And owner. Okay, great. James, good evening. Are you there? Good evening, commissioners and Chair Hill. Thank you for letting me speak. 
Uh, my wife and I, uh, my wife Kim and I are the property owners. The agenda report is very thorough, but I would like to provide a bit of context about our application. We are established members of the Malibu community. Last year, our daughters, Tenley and Taylor, graduated from Malibu High School. They were sophomores when we lost our home to the Woolsey Fire. We are not developers, investors, or a limited liability company. We are not building a vacation house. We've never used our home as a short-term rental, and we never will. We are a regular family trying to build our primary and our only residence. We are honoring the wonderful property that we lost by attempting to rebuild with an identical floor plan. The house has a, that house had a daylit basement that added utility and value. Our objective is, is to fully and not partially rebuild our home and do so with all the required permits and in accordance with the processes laid out by the, by the city. When we purchased the house in 2016, we didn't consider whether the basement was permitted. We needed the space and we used it. I use it every day as a home office. Yesterday while touring the property, Commissioner Maza asked whether a variance was required when the previous daylit basement was finished. The answer is no. Our architect carefully analyzed drawings of the original house and determined that 62% of the basement wall area was below ground. This is well above the 50% threshold for which a variance was required back then. And this should alleviate any concerns about creating bad precedent. We are not seeking a special privilege. As the agenda report notes, daylit basements are common in Malibu, and this is particularly true with hillside homes. This morning, you received four examples of properties with daylight basements located just down the street from ours. We have been working very hard for the past three years to rebuild. We started right after the fire. It has been an excruciating process. Your support is essential for our family to recover from the fire. Rejection of our application would mean that our house will only be partially rebuilt and will not support the investment we've made. Ultimately, rejection of our application would have devastating consequences for our, my family, both financially and emotionally. Our application is unopposed and enjoys the support of our neighbors. And we would greatly support, appreciate your support as well. Our architect, Daniel Zeese, is available to address technical questions. Thank you again. Thank you, Jim. Um, you have 12 minutes and 20 seconds remaining if you, if you need to rebut any, I don't know. Uh, do, do we have any public speakers even, Rebecca? Any other speakers? There are no other speakers signed up for this item. I, okay. I guess I, I, if, if I could, I would maybe like to address the uh, an issue that uh, Commissioner Maza has raised about the ongoing construction um, and, and uh, perhaps Daniel can can help me out here, but we did receive a permit to build the 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 the, the structure except for the basement. And in order to do that, we did have to build the foundation um, that is at the bottom of the house. We you know we we couldn't do that without we couldn't build the top part, which we had received the permit for that back in October. So we we've been trying to. Um, you know, work on the parts that have been permitted. Uh, we haven't finished any portion of the of the basement. Um, it, it's it, it's it's there. Uh, the floor is there, but we've capped off the plumbing, and and we're, we have no plans to to touch anything there. Uh, and you know, until we until we um, receive a variance. So uh, there's been inspectors out at the at the site uh, every other day. Um, they have they're aware that the basement is not permitted. Um, so we're not, I don't think we're, we're, we haven't attempted to do anything nefarious. We're just trying to work through the process. We are trying to get the house reconstructed. We didn't think this process would take that long, to be honest. Um, so, um, you know, I, I think every, we've been trying to follow the, the rules as best we can, not trying to hide the ball or, or do anything untoward. We're really just trying to rebuild the house we had and, and do so in a fully permitted manner in accordance with all the regulations. And um, I just wanna say one thing about the grading. Um, th th I, there are pictures in the staff report that show the, the a retaining wall um, that I think, I think uh, Chair Hill and Commissioner Mazda looked at yesterday. That, that retaining wall has been chopped off. 
And, and there are pictures in the staff report that show that what the retaining wall looked like uh, originally before the wall was chopped off. So that, that retaining wall is now three feet lower than what you viewed yesterday. And that is very clearly depicted in, in pictures that are in the staff report. So um, I, I think it would be very difficult to, to look at the property today and, and kind of try to imagine what was there um, when the old house was there, because there have been there have been changes to the to the property um, necessitated by the fact that we're we're building a new house. There's been uh, there's been changes there. It's just very difficult to eyeball what was there um, and say, well, this is what I imagine the old basement looked like. So we had our architect go back, look at the drawings of the original house and do some very careful analysis to figure out what, what percentage of the basement was above ground and which was below ground. And it was, it was definitely uh, more was below ground than above ground. So um, that's, all, that's all I have to say. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. And, and Daniel Zies also is, is available for questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, James. Um, uh, commissioners, um, I have a couple questions of staff and a couple questions of the applicant. Uh, before we get onto mine, uh, I'll take some from others, but I'd also just like to alert staff to give them some time that uh, I think we'd like to see at some point the photographs that would, as uh, Mr. Tomlinson just mentioned, would suggest that that retaining wall has been cut if there is some photographs that show it being three feet taller than it is now. Um, and also, at, if you'd be able to pull up when we ask for it, the A3.3 graphic page that they sent in today with the annotations on it of where the old basement was, because we, we may want to talk about that graphic too. Um, Dennis, go ahead. Okay, uh, first, Mr. Tomlinson, um, who did your application work? Did the architect turn all this paperwork in or are you doing it? Uh, that was that was uh, architect Daniel Zies who was on on the in the meeting tonight. Okay, so I'd like to ask him a question real quick. So you you've got a basement and you've got a basement and you have moved forward. So you got you've got structural plans, I hope, and that I uh, hopefully you have after you got your permit you have taken the structural plans and your plans and you resubmitted them back into the city where Andre at the city would have taken a look at them and it would be in a plan process right now. And that process has to be approved. So you're moving forward and I'm hoping this isn't the case. You're moving forward thinking it's all good or are you, did you turn everything in and you have not received everything back yet from Andre? Yes, so um, hello, gentlemen, thank you for uh, listening with us tonight. Uh, basically, the drawings that were approved were under the PV submittal and we had the basement shown as a crawl space. So the idea is that if the variance was not granted that, that that whole level can be buttoned up and kept as is, as opposed to being built out. However, all the structural components, including retaining walls, piers, et cetera, were all put in place to hold up the upper levels. So the non-load bearing partition walls, uh, windows, doors were not part of that approval. So we're, as far as any work that was done in that scope of work was, uh, basically at risk by the contractor. Uh, it's not something that we were uh, including in our drawings that have been approved so far. All that is uh, you know, pending this review, going to the billing department so that we can get approval for all those uh, eventual build outs. Okay, I, I'm gonna be honest, man. I'm a contractor here and I'm, I, I'm doing some consulting work for some people that, that thought that it was okay to do just that. And if the inspectors have come by and you're continuing to work, I guess you can work on the house, but somehow without looking at the plans real quick, all this has to tie in together. And if you don't have structural um, uh, approval yet and the contractor's still moving, somebody's in deep doo-doo. And I don't know that I would wanna be on the end of that. I, I, 
I, I would think the architect would go to the contractor, somebody would tell him that, dude, you need to pack off or you can only go so far until this stuff is done. Um, th this doesn't sound good to me. And I, I, you know, I'm a pro guy with the fire thing, but just hearing about you guys moving forward and you don't have all the paperwork and you're just going to pass it off on the contract and go, oh, well, he's just moving forward. <laughs> You you got to know, man, that that you can't do that. So um, I I know that, but questions, but that, that's that's what it sounds like to me. Well, as the architect, I submitted the drawings that were approved, and that's the only work that I I have my stamp on. I don't have my stamp on anything beyond that. So as, I have no control over the site. I'm not the contractor. As a person okay, okay. To be taking care of the client. And, it seems to me you would be telling him, you know what, they, they can't go forward until this is done, but yet okay. this is what's happened. Okay, um, Daniel and, and Jim, this is primarily a conversation among the planning commissioners at this point. We will undoubtedly have questions for you, but we need to try to keep the conversation among the, the mainly the five of us. Uh, John? Yeah, I one thing I want to point out when we discuss this is when the city council approved rebuilds for Woolsey Fire. They were asked by uh, Lester Tobias and uh, Doug Burge and several other architects to allow rebuilds as they were rather than what was permitted. And they made a very specific point that you, you could only rebuild what was permitted. Uh, it was a directive. Uh, Planning Commission, Planning Department knew about it. And uh, so we have to take that in in what we consider. We've been told not to let people bootleg. Uh, now, the one thing that bothered me the most was, and we can go over the drawings, but this is, you can live in it right now. I mean, you'd have to plug a toilet in, but there's pigtails coming out of the wall with the electrical. There's there's water systems, there's floors, there's uh, walls, uh, there's sliding glass doors to outside, there's deck, there's a new foundation for the deck. Um, it's, it's almost done, okay? It's to the point of where you can plaster it and live in it, throw in some tiles on the floor or something. Uh, it also has a stairway to it was done during framing. Uh, and when we see the drawings of the reason why I think he brought in this, this um, drawing of the elevations where it's 50% below ground, as I mentioned, gee, the staff report says, says nothing about what could have been approved before the basement ordinance went in. But before the basement ordinance went in, we had a basement ordinance. It said, you could not have a basement that daylighted more than 50% of the average of the walls. That's where that came in. But that doesn't negate the fact that it was never applied for. And when you see the drawings, it could not have been built that way. It's impossible. The staff report mentions, quote, and I've never heard this term, a soft story, which means you had a dirt floor, um, apparently. Uh, it was very obvious that this was part of the full construction project. The plumber didn't come in after he finished the top two and a half floors or three floors. And no matter, look at it, say, hey, can I put some plumbing down here? Neither did the electrician, neither did the carpenter, neither did the anybody, the, the window installer, the uh, the whole thing. So the state of the house as it is now is the same on the three on the two and a half floors that were permitted as it is below. There's no difference in timing. It's done from day one. So what's concerning is one of the statements made was, well, gee, this house didn't get any higher. Well, of course it got higher. It's made from natural gray. Natural grade has been changed in these plans. To, it's the lower, lower finished or, or natural. It's been bulldozed down around, around the sides. 
Uh, so what we're looking at, in my opinion, is when we do a variance, number one, we have to have a reason. Okay, It has to be common in the general area, and there were other variances granted. The houses shown in the pictures, two of them, I don't believe, have a basement uh, under any consideration. They're above ground. Uh, but I've known no variances in the neighborhood at all for non-compliant basements. Um, so what we have to look at here is, are we following the planning, the city council's directive to let people get a quick pass to build their house back? Or are we, and, and not build anything that wasn't permitted? That's why they passed the uh, rebuilding law or whatever, the Woolsey ordinance. That's why they passed it. Make it fast, make it simple, and and don't go outside of the boundaries. This one went massively outside the boundaries because we're talking 1,460 square feet. No small amount. I think there's two bedrooms and a kitchen and. Okay, John. I, I think so. So that's what I'm looking at, and we can look at the details here, but. Um, Unfortunately, you guys didn't get to see it, uh, but it's it's the most obvious thing I've ever seen on planning commission. In my in the planning commission, it's it's pretty dramatic. I, I have a question for staff, and I think Dennis, you you will, you'll probably want to weigh in on this. Um, we've been told that they needed to pour that huge concrete foundation uh, under that bottom floor as a to make it a hard story. Um, that that helps with the fire protection and so forth. I I don't understand why or what re would require that because uh, I, I, we have plenty of houses that are just on on piles that don't have to have an, an entire flat hard basement story built in with a, a foundation slab that ranges up to well, more more than three feet high um, in in thickness. And you know, for fire protection, I think the practice would be, and Dennis, say, tell me if this is close. I think you would just spray in some kind of concrete slurry under the bottom, and you would seal it up in a way that makes it fire safe. But you're not actually building in a whole separate additional floor down there. Yeah, what that would, be, that would be their call. I mean, if they wanted to leave it dirt or whatever, but yeah, you could do that. Or you'd, you'd put in, put in, put down a rock basis, and and. Something. Create, put, uh, what do you call it? Um, create the aggregate. Anyway, the, the, you, you would fire seal it with something else without necessarily building a whole basement floor. A gunite or something? Yeah, or whatever, whatever the fire safe material is. So, I, I mean, this is the argument we're getting. What's, what's staff's, uh, rationale for that? Unfortunately, we don't have Yolanda. Uh, Yolanda worked uh, with the uh, former planner that was working on this project uh, to come up with a design that uh, would structurally uh, be be safe. And uh, there was a lot of conversations um, that they had, and um, it was determined that the piles just had to be um, connected uh, structurally uh, in order for it to be a safer structure. And we have the architect here. Um, maybe he can uh, give you. Well, hang on, hang on. I don't. I don't necessarily need to get into the weeds on this particular design. It's more a question of what the precedent is, the typical practice, and and I mean, in that case, wouldn't you just have a grade beam between the piers, the pilings, and you wouldn't necessarily need to fill the whole thing. Well, so... I, again, I, I don't know the specifics. Uh, I, I was not. I just know those comments conversations uh were had i had this uh, had similar questions that that you have now uh when uh this was um shown to me but i was assured that this is um the design uh structurally that would be uh the best uh for the building given the, the way the building is designed and uh yolanda um you know said that there was there was no way to accomplish uh, the the structural integrity that this building is providing in in other ways. So um, that's that's really all I know. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, Yolanda isn't here to really 
um, give us any more uh, input on that. Okay, well, let's put a pin in that. I, I would like to look at, if we could pull up the graphic that was sent to us today with the, the elevations of the old house with the, um, the basement sort of schematically hatched in on top of that. Do we, do we have that handy? Can we put that on the screen? There we go. Excellent. Thank you, Philip. Um, okay, so I had a few questions about this. Can everybody see that pretty clearly? If you can't see it, speak up. Yeah, so a uh, question one, it, comparing the front view to the rear view. So let's see, so we have the rear elevation on top. Can, can we get a frame that has the rear elevation? In, uh, okay, like yeah. that. There we go. All right. Could I make a quick comment before you go through all this? Yeah. Uh, the reason, the only reason we're looking at this 50% is because that's the only way you could have a basement prior to 2002. Right. And it's not that it was ever approved. Okay. This that... is, if you want to say, okay, let's go back 21 years and see if they, if they applied at that time, maybe they could have gotten it. It's not saying, gee, if it's this way, it's an automatic. That's all I'm saying. Right. Um, and so we're looking at this in terms of the variance. Would you allow a variance for something that was never approved or approvable? But just to, just to clarify, I, I would like to understand these drawings a little bit better to see how close we are or aren't. Um, it looks to me that when you, if you, in your imagination, you flip between the rear and the front views, that there are portions that aren't entirely, they don't match completely. Like for example, the, the rear elevation um, in the middle of the drawing is much wider than the section in the middle on the front elevation. So that's that's one question. I'll leave that hanging. I'll, we'll open up the mic for for uh, the applicant. That's one question. Question two: If we look at the side elevation, if you can scroll that to the let's say the left side grade. Okay, good. We have both sides together. Um, that left side elevation, the ground level is clearly much lower based on the height of the retaining wall, and I'm going to have to say. Uh, pending any photograph of that retaining wall being three feet higher or so, that the aging, the texture of both the side and the top of the wall is strongly suggestive that it was not cut where it is, that the, the top edge of it is as aged as the front side of the wall, suggesting that it, it if it were ever cut, it was decades ago. Um, so that means that that left side elevation, the actual ground level is substantially lower than what is depicted there. And then on the right side elevation, I don't understand, and this again, this is a question, why the basement area depicted doesn't project all the way out to be under roughly uh, coincident with the front edge of the ground floor um, out by the stairway there. There's a whole section there that hasn't been filled in, whereas when you look at the left side elevation, it does come out much closer to the the, the very front of the, the upper structure. You all see what I'm, am, am I not making sense to anybody? Making sense to me. You see how they, it, it, the, I understand the issue, yeah. But Yeah, but. so so the question is, I mean, I'm, we're, we were shown these drawings today as, as a justification for, I mean, I, again, I, John is right. I don't know what, what the weight is that you attribute to this, given that it wasn't um, permitted ever in the first place. But I, I just wanted to be clear about what we're looking at. John? I just want to point out one thing. If you can move it back down um, so we can look at the top part of this uh, thing. The applicant just stated it was 62% below grade. But if you look at right about where that arrow is, there's a little notation that calculates. We actually got to go up a little bit more. Um, Scroll it, up. Yeah, it it calculates well, somewhere in there on the one I got today. It calculates the actual square footage, and uh, 
of above and below ground, even if you believe it. And right, right there, uh, right on the right hand side of that top frame, uh, the numbers aren't 62. There's 674 and a half and 674 and a half. They're exactly 50%. Um, but when you look at the drawings, massive areas are not side hatched instead of cross hatched. And the side hatching is above grade. So, this, and these are obviously new plans. Uh, we don't, and I can understand why they don't have the original plans. Um, that was a long time ago. Uh, can, can we see the the photograph that they just said there is a photograph that shows that the retaining wall that we think was not chopped off, they th they're saying it was chopped off, um, that shows it to be, you know, I think they said three feet higher than it actually is now. Do we do we have that photograph somewhere? Is it um, is it this photograph that they're talking about? Um, you zoom in, it would be over on the right side as we're looking at it now. So the, really the left side from the street, but yeah. Now you can see in that photograph of fence on the right hand where that palm tree is. That's natural gray. You see the palm tree sticking out of those little things that look like palm trees. That's natural gray. And that's the bottom floor. It's it's not it's not it's not a basement. It's a it's above grade. You can look on the left hand side of the bottom floor and see the doors. Uh, they're full size doors. John, I think what we're looking at here, I think in in some sense, kind of everybody's right in that that wall looks to be two different materials. The bottom part is sort of darker, and that is what is remaining on the site to this date. The top, the the top part, the lighter material is what is gone now, and uh, so it looks to me like this: the bottom concrete retaining wall, and then the top part is more of a not a structural retaining wall, but more of a decorative something that was added on and has since been removed. Yeah, but what I'm saying, but but but, but to to finish the thought, that that lower portion, the retaining wall portion, indicates the. Uh, the, the the ground level and you can see where it relates to the ground here now and that's much different than what it is to date now the the basement story rises up much higher than that such that a lot of it is above the ground level yeah but my point is if you look at this drawing this photograph and you take off that different color cement at the top which appears yeah. to be uh, a wall you can lean over, you'll yeah. see that the building behind it is a full story building. It's got sliding glass doors in it and it's on grade. It's not below grade and you can see the grade on both sides of the building, especially where you see the fence. Yeah. That's the lot next door. That's grade. That yeah. building is not underground. It never was a basement because it never was underground. Basements are supposed to be underground. It isn't the, excuse me. I I understand what you're saying, but isn't the point that the the daylight the the basement that was daylighted and that if you go into the picture further back into the picture that that's the portion that's underground? Isn't that what the applicant is saying? And that this is the portion that daylights the portion that you can see here is the portion that daylights. Well, no, you're not saying that because you can see the full size doors. They're not. No, no, you, speak well, to my my question is because this property slopes up to Latigo Canyon Drive, right? And so my understanding of what he's talking about, and I'm hopefully we're going to get an opportunity to get the architect to explain what his drawings mean. But my understanding is naturally is that is is that it, there, there, there's Latigo Canyon Drive is right is above yeah. the level of this house so that the house is dug into the hill and the basement is dug into the hill. Now we can argue about whether it was more or less than 50% and we can argue about whether that's relevant or not. But that's what I'm getting out of this picture is that that lower story is dug into the hill. Well, Jeff, I think what you want to see is the diagram that we just saw where well, you see yeah. a whole bunch of this front is shown as being underground. 
it's it's okay to me what you're looking at here the the front side will i don't know if we could, we'll call it the south we'll call it the rear side is you're lost craig your, your sound is bad oh really huh there you go um that's weird uh entirely date my internet i'm getting a message saying my internet connection is unstable i don't know why that would be can you hear me now yes. yeah all right so the the this rear side is all above ground as is the side over on the right it's all or, or virtually all above ground on the left side they talked about how they had a window at the top of the wall um so suggesting it was over half underground but we don't know how much more. And then on the backside facing the road, their diagram shows that it's mostly underground, but not entirely. So when when looking at it from at, in my head, synthesizing this photo, the diagram we got with the site visit, it was less than 50% um, underground. And, and I, I, I understand all of that. I was just yeah. reacting to John's statement that this was never underground. I mean, well, I don't think anybody contends that it was ever underground. Yeah, entirely. Well, uh, you're right. You're right. The relevance is 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 uh, sketchy because of the fact that could, could, could we go back to the to the hatched uh, drawing? Would that be yeah, possible? Let, let's I'd like that. to ask. And Jeff, while you're looking at this, uh, you have to realize that this is not a sloped hill. It's you know like an angle all the way down. You drive down to the path. Uh, from the road, it, it does, okay. it, that's where you park. Okay. So let, let's can can um, the architect who prepared this uh, is with us, right? Yeah. Can, can we ask you? him what this represents and how he calculated it and so forth? Yeah, and I, I asked a few questions about it that maybe he can clarify. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so uh, to help clarify, first of all, the plan is not a, a a rectangular box. It, the building has a, it's a, it's bent. So if you look at the two drawings there in front of you, you'll see break lines. One's right above the, where it says rear elevation at the bottom of the top drawing. And then on the drawing below that, you can see the other break line where it kicks over there. So basically on the front elevation, the building is, is uh, not as wide because it, it kind of flares out. If, if there's a way we can look at the plan, it actually the, 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 the design that we have now reflects the, the previous building's footprint. So I think that's where some of the confusion is lying in the fact that uh, the, el the front elevation is not as long as the rear elevation. And then the other, and then the other part that complicates things is that the, the main level of the structure is not all on one level. It uh, steps with the with the slope uh, left to right on the you can see on the on the lower elevation there in the view uh, those two boxes that we're showing actually in both the views we're showing them offset because that's uh, basically the height difference between the uh, on the main level that's following the slope of the site so I hope that helps clarify some of it but. Uh, let me just ask a couple of, of foundational questions. Could you explain, uh, first of all, because we all got this stuff in by email, but would you explain what these drawings are intended to represent? So what we did was we we matched up as best we could the previous uh, basement level with these elevations to show basically the the wall, the exterior wall on that elevation for that for that basement area. So, right, and then we use the grade line that's shown on these drawings to represent the uh, daylight portion of the wall and the other part that's underground. And then we took the, the sum of all those rectangles and then subtracted, uh, basically divided by the crosshatched area to come up with our uh, calculation there on the right where it says legend wall area. And then what did you use to, to say as best you could? What did you use to determine the level of the, of the previous basement? Uh, basically these drawings. Uh, we have this and then uh, the drawing set was very thin. We didn't, it didn't have a lot of detail, but uh, this is what we used to design the new building. 
this uh, is a drawing set from the from the building be, that that was. Is that what you're talking correct? About? Yeah, this is the original proof set from the seventies. But annotated, right? You added the cross hatches. Yes, now, we added the yeah. hatch. Now I just this is what I was trying to point out before, Jeff. On the right there, right next to the left of the word residence, is the calculation. And if you blow that up a little, you'll see that the numbers are exactly the same. Um, Six hundred and seventy-four feet. Point five. Okay. Now, uh, if you go back, are we talking about this the legend wall area there where it says yeah, the yeah, and that's where he's calculating his fifty percent. Can, can you go back and show the bigger the bigger picture? Go back down. Subtract. There you go. Now, I just want to point out that when you looked at the prior picture, which was the house before the fire, you saw a deck out front, and you saw. Uh, you see the, the wall, and you see that there's full stories there, right? Yeah. If you go back to this picture, um, you'll see, well, on the rear, rear elevation is what we're looking at. Now, can you slide that out of the way? One to the left or one? There you go. You can see that the natural grade, as they're showing it, is way above that, okay? They actually walked in and out of that building. They actually, that's only about four feet showing uh, above grade. And that's an eight-foot eight, eight foot door, so it's by 10 feet. So this drawing is not calculated correctly. There is, in that other picture, you'll see a flat, at least 10-foot high, bottom floor. And it's it was not covered with dirt. People did not look over a mountain uh, of dirt to see outside. It's it's plain as bell in that picture. So can I, can I make a point? I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, Commissioner Massa, but uh, as you mentioned, these plans have not been reviewed and verified by staff. Um, and I, I I I would agree that it is possible there are some mistakes here. Um, I, my my point would be uh, to if if the commission uh, decides to uh, require that they comply with the 50% rule is to either uh, continue the item and allow uh, revised plans to be provided and then uh, those reviewed uh, or to approve the project with that as a condition of approval and then uh, staff will verify that they comply. Now uh, the 50% rule is not what the adjacent grade is next to the building. Uh, the 50% means that um, they, what I mean is not a retaining wall adjacent to the building, but what the grade is as it touches the exterior of that building. Correct. And so, and so uh, there could be uh, situations here where that's not the case. And so we would have, you know, they might have to make some revisions. Well, and again, these are old plans. Uh, these are, you know, the original approvals, grading has changed. There's been some retaining walls added to the project, et cetera. So if that's the direction, maybe we can. Well, I, I, I want to stop you there for a second. That is not my direction. My direction is the only possible way you could have a basement there under a fire rebuild is if it was permitted prior to 1972 following those rules. It was not, okay? This is just to show that it could not be, could not have been. Yeah, can I can I interject, John? Yeah, go ahead. John, John I, I think the, the 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 deeper issue here is goes back to what council decided that that when confronted with the idea of let's make everything that's pre existing non conforming, uh, let's let's pass that um, as brought up by Mr. Tobias and Burge and the council expressly said no 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 we we need to, there had to have been a permit there before. And I mean, that's that's the most black and white and uh, to me, the most problematical thing about this. That, and then and then you look at a picture of the way it was before. And there's no possible way, according to these diagrams, you could even even if the council had said, oh, let them play like they could have gotten a permit. Okay. So in other words, you're saying not only was it not permitted, that it was not permittable. But I don't know that I don't know that that's relevant. Even I think yeah, it's not relevant. I just I just wanted to throw that out because 
not permittable is a big deal also. And I also agree with Dennis. You don't go in and get a, a fire building permit and throw in your plans. And the three commissioners who have not seen this do not realize how complete it is. These are plans with walls, kitchens, bathrooms, retaining walls, doors, windows. I mean, this is all there right now, this very instant. And it was done without permits. And if we get into the situation and with Wolsey Fire rebuilds, where we say, okay, well, yeah, this guy can, this guy can do Ill rebuild illegal stuff, but the other people can't. And I know we have not, I hope the city hasn't approved, but us as a body have never given a variance for uh, uh, unpermitted construction under World War Z fire rebuild. We've never done it, and we've been told not to do it. So I, I think this is denied. Uh, so, so, John, I'm, I'm hearing, uh, Jeff, you, you're about to say something. I'm, there's no mystery about what, what John's position is or yours either. Um, I, I, my question is, and I'm going back to what Adrian was talking about before he was cut off, the, the staff report talks about how it would have been, this is while a walkout basement like this was in compliance with city standards prior to 2004, it does not meet the current definition of a basement pursuant to section LIP section 2.1. And um, I, I, a couple of questions. One is I, I, I participated in that whole basement fantasy land that we went through about <laughs> I know a basement when I see it. Uh, and I, I can't remember the details. But my first question is, when we, prior to the adoption of the new rules in 2004, under the old basement ordinance, the 50% daylight thing, did we still have the 50% the um, the, the thousand free square feet of, yeah. uh, against TDSF and 50%? I don't think we did. I, no, it, it, you, yeah. did not. you did and not. So, and so if, if we hypothetically were to say that, well, this could have been approved, uh, it wasn't. Nobody applied for the permit. Uh, you know, Malibu. My, who, who would imagine bootlegging? But uh, it, it could have been approved. Uh, and but then, does that throw them? If we say that that would could have happened, does not that now throw them? Uh, and disallowing the thousand square feet and disallowing uh, the fifty percent against TDSF, does that put them over TDSF requirements now? Or do you have you got that calculation in your head? Well, all we have to do is add 1,462 feet to the TDSF that it's saying it is now in state. Um, the other, we, 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 can look into, we, we can look into an answer for you, uh, Commissioner Jennings, uh, for, for the TDSF uh, question. I don't think we, we were making, again, it's a variance for the basement. And so, uh, we were making assumptions that this would be considered a basement right. and that it would be a basement similar to a basement that would have been approved prior to 19, or 2004. So the basement, um, John, is 1,400 square feet? 1,463. And it looks the, like there would be within the, the limit. Okay. The, the it, it's point, I, I just want to make one point. As you read part of the staff report, that said it would be would have been approvable. I know. I, know. I don't think there's one minute spent on that statement that verified it. No, it, it may or may not be true. And that's why Adrian was suggesting that it needed to be looked at if that was the direction that we were intending to go. And and I understand your position. I'm I i do not take you know it's 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 certainly not good practice for uh and I don't know whether maybe the architect's contract with his client doesn't have any role for the architect in construction supervision. Uh, if it does, he should have not allowed this to go forward. The, the client should not have allowed the construction to go forward. Uh, I was curious as to how we ever got to this point too. And that was the first thing. How did you get, how did you get permits at all for any portion of this building if you didn't get permits for the whole thing? But um, on the other hand, it's not my job to, um, 
to enforce the morality of people in the building trades. And uh, I don't see that as, as part of our role. Uh, and I am sympathetic to burnout clients. I'm sympathetic to them getting back to where they were, particularly because this particular uh, burnout victim um, didn't have any role in the construction of the basement, whether it was unpermitted or per could have been permitted or wasn't permitted. It was some prior owner. So the equities, uh, in my view, kind of lean in his direction if there's a way to get there. I'm not sure there's a way to get there, but if yeah. there's a way to get there, I think the equities kind of lean in, the, in, in their direction. Yeah, I, I, I feel sort of similarly, I think. I, um, John, it sounded like you were moving towards a motion to deny on the basis of not meeting the variance findings. Well, I, I, my point is, I don't think we have the ability to go back and say, gee, it wasn't permitted, but it, it, you probably could have done it if you wanted to be straight back in 1998. That's not what the council told us to do. They told us to take what was permitted and let them rebuild it. So I don't think, number one, we have the ability to say, yeah, but if you'd done something 25 years ago, uh, it would have been legal. And then I think the other thing that, that unfortunately, three of you didn't see it. Uh, it is so obvious that it was bootlegged under the supervision of the city that it's it's just not right and uh, and the fact that the owner and the architect submitted plans that it purposely omitted what they claimed was there purposely admitted it and got them approved and started building means that they knew that it wasn't legal and uh, that's a very slippery slope when when you take away the the um, city council's directive and the planning commission's prerogative to approve things and you just say forget that let them build it and then have it get built and and I really can't emphasize how much it, how, how much of a difference it makes when you walk into that building and you see I could move in here tomorrow all I have to do is put in the toilet and turn on the water um, and hook up some you know screw some wire nuts off and screw some light bulbs on it that's pretty far out as far as I'm concerned on the building code the Woolsey a Woolsey fire rebuild and everything else. The only reason I brought up the 50% rule is number one, I don't think the, the staff looked at it at all because the, in one day, this guy had to, the architect had to come up with this diagram. There's nothing else in the record at all that anybody calculated 50% of anything. Uh, and how casually this was done. And if Craig and I hadn't gone out there, Saturday or whatever day it was Saturday, we would never, would have never known. Yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Martin Luther King. Okay, John, John, this, this is a good point and it's a good, you know, uh, referendum on staff, but that's not really what's right in front of us. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to beat up on staff. I'm trying to say. Well, on the process. The, yeah, but the process was complicit with the owner and builder. Now, to, to to Jeff's point about, you know, trying to look at the equities of it and kind of some of the more non-rational aspects, I wonder if it's relevant to ask, what does the title insurance say about what this building is? And whether in terms of, you know, who was on notice when about what? And, um, you know, if, if the title insurance shows that, that that space was part of the square footage originally, then, you know, that might lean it more towards opening a door towards the variance somehow, even though I still think it's a high bar to get over the the notion of of saying, yeah, let's try to somehow squeeze you through with something that was never permitted and possibly never permittable um, in the first place. I mean, it's just, it's not a precedent we want to be making, but I mean, I'm just, 
I'm, I just, just your question is if 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 when the current owners took title, whether their title policy uh, contained um, an exception uh, as to the as to this basement area. Yeah, or just how what what did it say about the square footage of the whole place, and was that something? I, generally, title policies don't say that. They don't, don't say anything about about square footage. Or, yeah, uh, I don't know. But um, well, they do. But, say, but they, they might if, if there if there's some question about the legality, there there will occasionally be a reference in the exceptions, the, yeah. the listed exceptions that might say you know as to the the legality of the of the basement it might be there i don't know but typically it wouldn't be but it might be and it's not really relevant to our discussion here now but it, i don't know just to try to get the whole picture here it could be enlightening to be looking at um the the due diligence kinds of questions and you know what should yeah. have been disclosed and wasn't but th th that's well, that's the course that left the barn and, 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 and there are other equities that go along with it too i mean it, you know it's one thing you're talking about removing something that had existed and existed for quite a bit of, bit of, uh, of time uh, without complaint. None of the neighbors are upset by it. Um, it's sort of like, yeah, it, it, who's harmed by this in, in a way? And, and I know, you know, oh, well, maybe the city council will be offended that we didn't do it the way they said we should do it. But, but it, it would be, it's, it's different when you're talking about a new building that's going up that's never, where nothing has never been there. Uh, at least in, in my mind, it, it, it's a little different than when you're talking about rebuilding something that has been there um, uh, and and been enjoyed for many years. That, that's that's the only. I just wanted to add that to the. Uh, well, I just, the it, it, just wait, John. But the, the problem is, it, it is just so expressly 180 degrees from what council said they wanted. It's really, it's it's hard to it's hard to thread the needle there, John. Yeah, well, the answer of who's harmed by this is is 430 uh, Woolsey victims, 429. They aren't allowed to do this. That's the answer to that. The other thing is, you're real actually saying, even on a new building, if somebody slides something in above what's approved and nobody spots it, that doesn't make it legal. Now, the other point I want to point out is on equity when you buy a house there's there's people involved the seller is liable for not disclosure and so is the real estate agent yep and, and they're liable if this if this owner has been harmed by being lied to he's got recourse and so how do we know that this guy, Scott Wilder, who bootlegged it in, did tell him. Or how do we know he did or didn't? We don't. That's for a court to decide, not us. Um, when you buy a house and, and it's supposed to be 4,151 square feet, but it's really uh, 5,600, 5, you got to ask yourself, why is that? The appraisal would show, uh, you know, any decent appraiser would would pick it up right away, uh, whether or not that 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 was uh, permitted square footage or not. If there yeah, was financing, I, I, I don't know where an appraiser would come into this situation. I, I'm just saying to for verification of who knew what when. If you got a loan, if you got yeah. a loan, he would have had to had it, have it appraised. Right. Yep. So what what the implication is that they must have known it was bootleg because it well my my indication of that is is they applied for a building and and, and for permits and conveniently left it off. Dennis has, hey, a, Dennis has a question. Oh I'm sorry, I can't see him on the screen because we've got the graphics. Dennis. Um to the architect, please. Okay, I think I probably cut you off because I was talking a little bit louder at the time. So I'll ask one more time. So the basement plans and the work that's been done, has that been inspected by our city inspector? Or is this already done and you haven't had any inspections since this all got done? 
on the basement plumbing? So, so basically, I was hired by the contractor, not by the owner. So I was working under his contract. The first time I went to the site since construction started was on December 20th. He did not have any budget for me to go out there and do any services during construction. The inspectors asked me to, uh, well, the building, the contractor supervisor set up a meeting with the, the inspectors and they invited me to come out as well. So that was the first time I got to the site. When I got there, the building's in the same condition yesterday as it was when I was there on the, on December. So, um, as far as when the, when, why the construction was built or why, or when it was built, I really had zero eyes on that or even any control over that. It was the contractor that, uh, you know, worked on that. We were providing designs for the draw, for the, the house to show what would eventually be, uh, hopefully approved so that he could bid everything accordingly. But I never stamped any of those drawings that, uh, showed any kind of build out of the basement. Dennis, are you saying? Hang, hang, on, hang on, John. Hang on, uh, Dennis. Do you want to follow that up? Well, yeah. I'm just <laughs> typically if the, if, the, if, the, if our inspectors come out because these guys are on it. I mean, they <laughs> if it's not right, it's resubmit and call me when you're ready. The the new guys that we have now are are no BS. Yes. They 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 came in. That's how they operate. It's real simple. They whatever they talk about for all the years is gone. These guys have a real good system and they don't have to worry about anything because they've got no dog in the fight, if you will. So what I'm asking is if the inspectors came out and they approved it, I can't see it because I just went through this today uh, over at a job that I'm doing consulting on and they can't move forward. They, they can't move forward until they've got a couple more pieces of paper that are turned in and it's got to come from Andre or it's got to come from the office. So, and of course I've tried to explain that to my client. Now they'll listen, but um, sometimes it takes a slowdown or a stop to get everybody's attention here. And like commissioner uh, Jenny said, that probably isn't our job, but um, I'm just looking at it as I know I'm not allowed to do it, but um, you know, it's either we continue it until this gets done, or I don't know if I, if Adrian ends up talking to Yolanda and going, oh, we got a problem out there. These, these guys cowboyed and went forward and didn't tell anybody. How do you want to handle this? I don't know. We got a couple of the basement part of it. I don't care about that so much as I, I just know there's a procedure you got to go through to get to that. And to me, it hasn't been followed. So I don't think it, maybe it's not the owner. It, I guess it's not the architect because he got hired by the framer and the framers just run through this thing, obviously, and, and, and hasn't talked to anybody. So however you guys want to go with this, I'm, I'm well, open. John, John. I, I just, I just believe that the architect just told us on December 20th, he met with the inspectors and I don't see any record of the inspectors stopping work or turning this into compliance or anything. So that's really screwy to me. That's why I was absolutely shocked when I walked and into that. I'm, I'm shocked if that's really what happened because I, I just went through it today and explaining that to my client that you can't take the next step until da 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 is done. Okay, so, I don't. Uh, I, I'm right. not. I'm not hearing a remedy here. I, I hear. I hear a, a plausible rationale for a no vote, and that that pushes off their problems into into the legal realm. Um, you know, and suits against title companies or whatever. But it, I also am hearing some discussion about, oh, well, we could get Yolanda in the mix and blah, 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 And I don't know what, I don't know what remedy that leads to. I think we still have the basic problem. Okay, well, I, I suggest. She's on the mound and we're in the bullpen. So she would make the call either they stop work or, and everything else gets turned in accordingly and the architect and the structural engineer or working on whatever they need to work on. But that's up to them. I think Commissioner Jennings is probably right. I, I don't get to make that call, but I'm just seeing it in front of me and going, oh my God, I can't, it's hard for me to believe our inspectors got that got past them. Um, well, if she's on the mound already, then, I mean, she, I don't know how that well, you, you, holds up. Greg, let me yeah. make a suggestion. Don, we yeah. could make a motion to deny, and if that doesn't pass, 
we can make make a motion to bring it back. I don't see how we can make a motion to approve it right now. Uh, so my, we, have, we really have two choices. My question is, what would you be bringing it back for exactly? Bringing it back for an explanation of what went on and 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 it was it ever eligible nobody studied it but their architect our staff obviously didn't and uh and then what what do the original permits say do they add this for uh, the original plan say do they add this 463 square feet i have a, my biggest problem is that the applicant put in an application for a building without a basement and then put in a basement. And obviously he's claiming that he had a basement. Why didn't he apply for it? And then my second question is, how did it get this far? And if we put it off, I really hope the three of you go out and see it because it's shocking. Okay. And it's nothing I've ever seen on the planning commission before. To me, the main the main reason for putting it off would be to have make sure everybody sees it. So we're really whatever we decide, we're we're nailing it down. Um, but but that's not the substantive reason for putting it off. So I I don't know. Um, I I I I'd like to either hear a motion to deny or a motion to put it off for a, a really nice specific reason. I think Commissioner Jennings has something he wants to say. Oh, I didn't. No, I just, actually I'm just sort of mulling it. I I. It's a thin, it's a thin read, a thin chance. Uh, I hate to deny these people if there's any chance that a plausible justification can be made to grant it. Uh, I'm not there yet. I wouldn't grant. I wouldn't vote tonight to to approve it. Um, but I do have specific questions. One would be whether or not, whether or not the applicant could come up with. Um, substantial evidence that would show that uh, had an application been made to permit the basement uh, prior to 2000, whatever it was, to uh, that it that would have been plausible, it, it would, would have been grantable. Uh, the other question I have is how in the hell did we get where we are with? With the, the, how did this ever get planning approval, uh, and and how did it get to the point of construction? Which I I take on your word that it is far advanced. How did we get this far? That's not really part of our business, but um, it would certainly be nice because I, I I think I think there's missing pieces here that we that you know it might be that Yolanda could come in and explain to us. And we'd say, oh, you know, I see. Okay, fine. I get how, how you got here. Um, it would make us more comfortable, maybe. Um, so, um, well, I'll try a motion and see whether it goes anywhere. I'll, I'll move that the matter be continued uh, to a date uncertain to allow uh, the applicant an opportunity uh, to uh, present additional evidence to planning staff uh, with respect to the permittability of the whatever was there uh, prior to 2002. Uh, and I appreciate that, um, well, I'll just stop there. That's a slippery slope. Yeah. And and would part of your motion would be uh, expressly to get Yolanda back into the mix and- to... Well, that would be, so, yeah, that would be my intent. Uh, it, it's really not, Related to this project, but I, but it would be helpful to have a fuller explanation of, of of how this ever got to where it is. Yeah, uh, just to let us understand more about how the process works or perhaps doesn't work. Now, Jeff, can I ask a question on your motion? Uh huh. Are you presupposing that if the, the, it comes back and somehow, as you say, a slim chance? they say it could have been approved that it's approvable um you know i'm not making any statement about that one way or another it kind of depends on what kind of evidence there is and, and how staff treats it um and, and i understand 
you know, I, I know what what the city council did, and and I know what what uh, Lester and and Doug and those guys were were saying, and 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 in general, I think that the, the city council made the right decision. I mean, you just want to, you don't want to let people build you know, whatever bootleg stuff they had there. This is a sort of a, to my mind, a sort of an in-between situation because it's got an innocent property owner. You got something that was there that could have been approved. You know, but what the city council was dealing with is things that never could have been approved. So, uh, to me, this is a bit more of a of a nuanced situation. Um, you guys don't see it that way. I get it, and, and I'm not I'm not in a position to make a final determination on it. And I don't know. I mean, if it, even if it does come back and it turns out uh, that it's that it's just too shaky for me, then no, then I won't support it. But but. Uh, so I'm not saying it's a foregone. It's not a foregone conclusion, so. Dennis. So, Assistant Director Fernandez, is this? They're allowed to continue to work because they have a permit for the main house, if you will. So I, I'm I'm glad I, I I thought I wasn't going to get a chance to to speak on 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 the issue because um, right before the meeting, I had a conversation with uh, Commissioner Mazza about this issue, and unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of time. But um, with that little time, uh, I did do some research. Um, so I did have a conversation with Yolanda and uh, she's actually looking into the issue. However, um, she is sure that, that uh, the inspectors did not authorize any of the work that was done to the basement. Uh, now, part of the house, part of the house um, construction Right, uh, included that basement, and that basement includes uh, doing the 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 slab uh, for the the basement as well as some of the exterior walls, um, and so that was uh, permitted and that was inspected. Uh, as as far as everything else, um, nothing's been inspected and nothing's been um, approved by the inspectors, um, and, and we can get some clarification on that. I also had a chance to speak to the architect, and the architect uh, uh, mentioned earlier today that about three weeks ago, there was an all hands on deck meeting uh, between the contractors and the inspectors, uh, and the inspectors called for this meeting because there were um, things that were happening on site that they were not happy with. Uh, okay. And so uh, during this meeting, they made a, a list of all the things they needed to do uh, instead of getting ahead of themselves or making, you know, changes as they go. Uh, and they are, uh, they were requested to submit plans uh, to reflect those changes. And um, I'm pretty sure uh, that at that time, the basement was, uh, discussed and they were told not to do any additional work on that space. So let me, if if I could just clarify, what you're saying is the structural work, columns and putting down the slab or whatever it was, that was all approved. Uh, it was just the finishing off and the electrical and the plumbing and everything else that John saw there that hasn't been approved and uh, has been bootlegged in essentially. And That's a, lot of, a lot of walls too, I think. Yeah. Uh, in interior walls. Interior. Yeah. Uh, yeah. okay. The whole interior was designed, engineered, installed, including electrical and plumbing. Right. And I'd like to see that December 20th report because I don't know how you inspect electrical and miss probably half a mile of electrical. I think that's what... For Assistant Director Fernandez has stated is, is the guys went back out there and did everything I told you guys that they would do. So well, then there was no stop work order, and I'd like to see the report of what they reported on that. Because this is, when you go out and see it, and you will go out and see it, Dennis, you know construction, you'll shake your head. All right. I, I'm hearing, John, you just said, uh, and you'd like to see. And so it sounds like we're we're moving towards a motion for let me let me let me just let me put out a caveat here. We our remit is with the planning department. Uh, we're not we have no supervisory role over building and safety or the inspectors or anybody else. 
if you want to see the report, John, I would suggest that you go down to city or get city hall to send it to you. And, but I don't think it's something that as a commission, we should be stepping on toes to try to to figure it out uh, what what individual inspectors are doing. Um, well, and I think, and, and actually Adrian, Adrian's explanation makes it pretty clear to me. I'm not even sure I need any more information from Yolanda. I think I understand I pretty much how we got where we are. Um, yeah. Well, Jeff, I would suggest you go see it first and see if that could all have been done without some inspector noticing it. Well, and well, when I, you finish, when you finish electrical and sign off, you finish electrical and sign off. No, no, no. I, 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 I get that. I just don't think that 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 we want to be. No, I, I, calling, I agree. I agree. Calling inspectors in front of us to criticize them for something. Oh, no, no, I agree. I agree. It's not our job. It's city councilman and city manager's job. All right. Who wants Who wants to formulate a, a motion here? Well, I did formulate a motion, but it never got a second. So I'll second it for a continuance to a date uncertain. Do we, can we can we just uh, remind ourselves what we're asking for in the meantime? Uh, I'm asking for staff to come back to us with an analysis uh, of whether there is substantial evidence to show that the basement that was could have been permitted under the rules that existed at the time the basement was constructed. And do we That's need do we want to know anything else? Do anybody need to friendly addition to that? No. Well, yeah, I, I'd like to see it actually documented. I I do request that you guys go out and take a look. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Dennis, was that a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Yes. Uh, any further discussion? No. Okay. Um, Rebecca, uh, roll call, please. She probably went home. <laughs> <laughs> You wish. Um, Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Vice Chair Smith? Yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> Commissioner Mazza? No. Commissioner Wetton? Yes. And Chair Hill? Uh, I'll say yes, uh, reservedly. Motion carries. Okay, can we have a break? Yeah, it's 931 now. Um, uh, we're not going to get to everything tonight, it looks like, unless there's some miracle on a couple of these. But um, if we could, we're going to be coming back and looking at 4B, Morning View, 4C, Ramble Vista. Um, and then we have the, uh, let's see if we get a start on the uh, uh, ADU stuff, right? That's So 10 minutes, um, or do you want to make it eight minutes? Want to call it 940? Yeah. Sure. You guys know when to come back. We'll see you in, in eight or ten. Stop your video and unmute.
Who do we have? We've got. got it didn't sound up. good, Mark. I'm here. It didn't sound good. What's that? That's Are you cough. the sneeze? Oh, that uh, oh, was a sneeze. It sounded like get your mask on quick. <laughs> it's, it's the beauty the of Zoom. Beauty of Zoom, right? Yeah. It's the spicy cough. Okay, there's Adrian. Who else might we need here now? Let's see. We're if we're going on to four B Morning View, uh, then there she is. That's who I was thinking of. Hi, Renika. <laughs> All right. All right. We are uh, back back at the commission table, um, and we're here to hear this correctly. Item four B. 3548 Morning View, um, Coastal Development Permit number 19-013 and Site Plan Review number 19-018, an application for a new single family residence and associated development continued from December 6, 2021 at 3548 Morning View. I said all that already. Uh, okay. Um, Renika, are you ready with your staff report, please? Renika? Muted. Um, yeah, I can't see every Renika, we can't hear you if you're if you've started. Are you muted? Yeah. Oh, there I am. There you <laughs> okay. are. Okay, can you hear me okay? Now we can hear you. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. okay, yeah, I couldn't unmute. Okay. All right. Um, hi, my name is Renika Brooks, a planner with the City of Malibu Planning Department. And I will be presenting this project, which consists of um, the construction of a new single family residence on vacant property located at 30548 um, Morning View Drive. Next slide, please. The subject property is an info lot approximately a quarter of a mile northeast, the intersection of Guernsey Avenue and Pacific Coast Highway. Next slide, please. <laughs> the project consists of the construction of a new two-story single-family residence, including a basement, which results in a total development square footage of a little over 7,200 square feet. Um, the project also proposes a new swimming pool and associated equipment, tennis court, fencing and gates, landscaping, hardscape, um, grading, um, a septic system, and associated development. Next slide, please. The site plan illustrates the project layout with the residence sited on the north end of the property facing Morning View Drive. The applicant proposes a pool at the rear of the residence and a tennis court at the rear of the property. Um, there's an access driveway um, that wraps around the proposed residence to access a subterranean garage. Next slide, please. 
And this is the north elevation of the proposed residence that faces Morning View. Next slide. Thank you. And the next couple of slides um, include um, images of the story poles that were installed to illustrate the siting and massing of the proposed residence. The project includes a request for a site plan review for development above the base of 18 feet. Um, to date, staff has not received any correspondence related to the obstruction of primary views. Next slide, please. And this is another view um, of the project site looking southeast from Morning View. Next slide. Thank you. After the staff report was published um, for this project, staff became aware that the 2019 approved landscape plan, which included palm trees, is inconsistent with the city's fire resistant landscaping ordinance, which was certified by the Coastal Commission in August of 2020. To ensure consistency uh, with the prohibition of palm trees required by the ordinance, staff has added a condition of approval that, will, that I'll now read um, into the record. Um, and this will be the new condition number 30 um, your, of your resolution. Prior to the issuance of building permits, the landscape plan must be amended by removing all palm trees. The amended landscape plan is subject to review and approval by the city biologist and the planning department. Next slide, please. In, in conclusion, staff recommends adoption um, of Resol, Resol number 22-03 as amended, approving the subject um, coastal development permit. And this does conclude my presentation and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Renika. Um, staff, let's first do disclosures. Um, uh, Jeff? Um, John? Uh, on Sunday? Uh, Monday. Monday. I visited the site with Craig. We talked with the uh, contractor. Um, even though, well, he is the contractor. He wasn't the firm's representative. Uh, toured the site. Didn't see anything. It wasn't in the staff report. <clears throat> and But we did notice a couple houses that may have view blockage. Apparently, they aren't around or did, don't have permits, uh, view permits. Um, Dennis? None. And Mark? None. Okay, yeah, as John said, and I'll just note that um, I it, there's clearly a view blockage for 6051 Phillip Avenue, um, but I did uh, in in a not entirely reliable way, check the on base to see if they had any kind of uh, PVD on file already. Did not find any. Um, I say not entirely reliable because uh, I find on base a little bit squirrely. So I'm never quite sure whether I'm finding everything that is to be found there or not. Um, but I didn't find any uh, uh, any PVD for that. So. Um, with that, uh, any, any quick questions for staff before we get to the applicant? John? A real quick question. Uh, across the street is that giant mansion that really caused Malibu to be Malibu um, that burned down. And I know we have waived, or you cannot get a view protection if you're a Woolsey Fire, is this area covered by that? Could somebody have a view protection after 2018? Or because this is kind of spotty. There's a couple houses burned and most of them are. So how does that work? Okay, Adrian. They can get a, a primary view determination uh, for purposes of protecting, uh, uh, you know, views uh from development and so um it's difficult though because if the house is burnt um it, it would be difficult to identify the location of the primary view so we to this day uh we have not uh been uh asked to do any of those pvds i, I don't know how we would be able to do them but i can i can tell you because i i was a planner on the house right next door to this and which is much closer to the house that you're referring to 
And that house, uh, we sent out the public hearing notice and we did not hear from the mansion across the street um, uh, at that time. And that house was, was still there. Uh, that was before the fire. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I don't think that they have any objections to the, this house as they didn't have any objections to the house next door, which would have had more of an impact on that property. And just to clarify, the, the council did pass a moratorium on the PVDs out in the Woolsey area, but I wonder if in this case you could get one and it would just be enforceable only against non-Woolsey fire rebuilds. Uh, it would be for purposes of the development, right? So the, yeah. the, the reason the city council adopted um, the, the ordinance uh, against uh, PVDs is for landscaping because we were getting some requests Mm -hmm. um, uh, early on, uh, when uh, these, you know, people's views were open up after all the landscaping uh, had been removed, and, and we were getting some requests to do that, and so that, so that was the main reason. But we have uh, PVDs to be done for development like this. Yeah. Any other quick questions? Yeah, well, uh, do we know for a fact that these houses don't have PVDs because these people don't live there anymore? Uh, in fact, I don't think anybody's lived in that the mansion across the street for 30 years, but uh, obviously yeah. they can't live there now. Yeah, well, we, we did check that uh, for my project, and they didn't have one at the time, and they haven't requested one since. Okay, this um, is the one with the two big lions and the big gates and all that stuff? Yeah, that's the one. Mm -hmm. And the one I was talking about was east of there on the corner at Philip and and... I didn't find anything in on base. So with that, let's open up the hearing and uh, invite the applicant to weigh in here. Um, if you'd open up his mic, please, Rebecca. I think we have Charles Santos. We have Charles Santos for the applicant team. All right. Welcome, Charles. Are you there? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Thanks. Hi. Hey, good evening, Chair Hill and commissioners. Um, I put a really brief presentation together. Um, it kind of mimics what Renika just said about the palm trees. I just heard about it yesterday. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, next image. So here's the property highlighted in blue, south of Morningview Drive. Next image. Um, there are some primary views to the east of the project. And uh, I ran into this with the house next door. So uh, those uh, primary views are preserved. Um, we're not planning anything uh, south, of the, south of the house. Next image. So this whole area in yellow uh, is, uh, is planted with shrubs and um, ground covers. And the house is uh, located up, to the, up close to Morningview Drive. So there's no uh, primary view impacts for the neighbors to the east. Next image. This is the landscape plan that was approved in 2019 before the new landscape ordinance and there were palm trees that were part of this project. I talked to the owner about it last night. She agreed to remove them. Uh, next image. Next image. So the palm trees are highlighted in orange and green. And those are uh, proposed to be removed, and we'll take those off the uh, landscape plan and resubmit a new one. Um, that's that's my presentation. Okay, Charles, thank you. You've got 13 minutes and 21 seconds remaining. Uh, I, I, are there any uh, members of the public wanting to weigh in here, Rebecca? There are no other public speakers for this item. Okay. Thank you. So we'll bring it back up to the commission, um, close the public hearing. Um, who wants to start? Uh, go Jeff. Jeff. I'll move the staff recommendation. I second that. I got a couple questions. So we've got a, we've got a motion on the table, John. Uh, Renika, this project has zero tolerance for another square foot. It's exactly at the TDSF limit. Um, so are we sure we've measured the light well and everything else that is considered a structure and we're exactly 7221? 
Yes. 72, 21 and a half. Yeah. Okay. Um, same thing with permeability. You know, I always wonder why people don't give themselves five square feet to find an error. But uh, yeah. uh, now, I couldn't read the landscape plan very, except for the bigger plants. There's there's plants all the way around the border. Are any of those projected to grow over six feet? I don't believe so. And I failed to mention there was a neighbor. I think it's one of the neighbors adjacent, maybe two doors down to the east, who had some questions about um, some of the shrubs at the rear of the property. And let me see if I could pull it up. But I did look that up to answer his questions. And none of them, um, they're like ground cover, like low, lot, low growing shrubs. Let me see if I could pull it up. Well, yeah, that's that's probably. I'm not much, so much worried about that because the same owner is building a the house mm -hmm. next door that's got that view. Right. He, he screw himself, I don't think. Right, and there um, is a condition as well. I believe there's a condition that prohibits um, the landscaping from blocking views. I'm not worried about views. I'm worried about height. Uh, on, mm -hmm. on the on the, I guess it'd be the uh, north and south walls, or no. The east and west walls, there's rows of plants all the way along them. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell if those are capable of growing over six feet or are they ficus or what are they? Because I couldn't read it. Okay, let me pull it up. While she's doing that, I'll just mention that John and I rode together in a car for the first time yesterday and <laughs> kind of had an informal tour of Point Doom, uh, kind of coming and going. And just sort of shocking to see how many ficus hedges there are all over Point Doom that are like, you know, 10 feet high, 15 feet, 20 feet high. Hmm. Okay, let's see what we've got here. So you're talking about, you're asking about the, the hedges along the, was that the eastern uh, side uh, of the property? The long side on both sides. Okay. I guess it's east and west. But yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Charles Santos has his has his name spelled wrong, um, and and his hand up. Well, you know, he probably knows better than I did. did she <laughs> Can we un unmute him and ask him? Yeah, I'm sorry. Unmute him, please. Hey, I I um I think I can help on my last slide with the <laughs> plan. I highlighted all the trees in color, so John, if John wants to see all of the trees, if you go to my last slide. They're on there. Okay, well, let's see it. Uh, my real question is. So, so John, I think this, this may help. So um, the, all the trees are highlighted here in color. The ones in red are olive trees. And the ones in blue are, uh, I don't know what this tree is. It's called the Maiten tree, but. Okay. These are all all of the trees on the entire property. Everything else is going to be shrubs and ground covers. Okay, so all those little right, yeah, these little circles all the way around mm -hmm. the front. Yeah, those are all little ground covers and shrubs. Those won't go over six feet. Okay. Um, and there's like I said, five olive trees in red, and these other trees called the Maiten tree. I couldn't tell you how high those are going to grow. I, I I'm not. Okay, I, I just one other question. I just noticed you see the yellow in the front. I'm warning you, you to drive some kind of tree. Yeah, um, the tree is the wall in front of that over 42 inches. Um, no, that front that front yard. So that front that front yard wall is a 42 inch wall with a, a wrought iron up above it, up to six feet. Okay, and then it's just open to the street in front of that? Yes. Okay, um, thank you. Thank um, you. Okay, and then the last question, Renika, is uh, I didn't get to, there's so much this week, I didn't get to the footnotes, I mean the uh, um, conditions. Do we have the rodenticide, rodent? Rodenticide and the dark, dark skies conditions in this? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's the end of my questions.
So they just don't want to know the species type? No, I don't care. If they're, if they're oh, little bushes, okay. I just didn't want a, a 150 foot long ficus hedge. Okay. Uh, other questions, anybody? I just yeah. had the, the light well has been counted as basement for TDSF purposes. Is that the correct way to count that? Because that counts it as half of what you would otherwise call it. Is that, so the is basement that... is like, uh, so the, the TDSF itself for the light well, is that what you're asking about? The it's light been... well should be counted as, as not basement. It's for TDSF, right. it's counted as basement, right? And that yeah. means that, no. that, that buys you double the amount because you only count half of the, the actual area then because it's in the basement. It's not counted as basement because it's uh, it's not under structure. We've always yeah, it's, it as full. Yeah, it's total development square footage. Like the, the entire area of the light well is total development square footage. Okay, so, okay, I, that, that was confusing, but that's reassuring. Okay, um, so we have a motion on the table without, unless there are further questions, I think we're about to, oh, Dennis? No. Okay. I'll move, I'll move approval of. We, we have, a, uh, Jeff put a motion. Oh, that's right, did have one, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I second it. Yeah. Uh, so let's have a roll call, please, Rebecca. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Vice Chair Smith? Yes. Commissioner Mazza? Yes. Commissioner Wetton? Yes. Chair Hill? Yes. All right. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, we are now on to. Uh, agenda item 4C, this is the 21463 Rambla Vista. I'm out. And you're out. Um, what? So, okay, well, let me let me just, where are we at? We're at 10 o'clock right now. It's hard for me to estimate whether this is going to be a super quick one or take all night, but. Just uh, to repair. Yeah. Um, no, it's not that simple, but okay. I can text Commissioner or Vice Chair Smith, if that's appropriate, um, and let him know to come rejoin the meeting if it looks like you're going to move on to the yeah. ADU. Yeah, I, and at this point, I would just suggest however long this takes, whether short or long, that for the AD1, at minimum, we should take whatever public comment is here. People, if they've hung out this long, they, they want to weigh in. And, and then if there are uh, questions of staff or anything that we need to update that we could at least kind of try to get through that. So on the assumption that it, it, if we do end up needing to continue it, we can at least take care of business, what what we have in front of us tonight and keep the ball moving forward, if that makes sense. So uh, on that note, let's open up, um, what is this, 4C, uh, Administrative Plan Review number 21-045 and variance number 21-011, an application to replace a 17.5 foot tall failing retaining wall continued from December 6, 2021. Um, can we have a staff report, please? Yes, hi. Good evening, Chair Hill, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, the Good next night. item tonight, how you guys doing? Next item tonight is administrative plan review number 21-045 for a project located at 21463 Ram La Vista. Next slide, please. The project is located in the La Costa neighborhood, uh, north of Ram La Vista and south of Ram La Oriente Street. The uh, subject site consists of uh, two parcels, a single family home that sits on the northern parcel and the southern parcel, which is highlighted in red there, is vacant and is where the entirety of the proposed project will take place. Next slide, please. The project proposes to replace a 30 foot long section of an existing retaining wall to reach a maximum height of 17 feet, six inches above grade. The project requires a variance because the retaining wall replacement is taller than 14 feet within the La Costa overlay district. Next slide, please. The retaining wall section is at the southeastern corner of the parcel at the toe of the slope. The original retaining wall was built to keep the hillside from falling onto the road, which is Ramla Vista. According to the project geotechnical report, the wall section is failing and the project geologist is recommending its replacement. However, the failing wall does not affect the structural integrity of the house atop the slope. Next slide, please. The replacement wall section is proposed to reach a maximum height of 17 feet, six inches. This demonstration shows the proposed wall indicated 
by the vertical green line. There was concern whether the objective could be achieved without having to exceed that 14 foot height maximum. The alternative wall proposal indicated in yellow shows what the wall may look like if the applicant proposed a two wall uh, plan with each wall being seven feet tall with a three foot separation. This alternative would not retain the entire slope and thus still require a variance to exceed the 14 foot tall limit. It may even result in a taller wall than what is proposed. It would result in more significant landform alteration and include additional grading of the site. Next slide. After concern over the proposed retaining wall being on a vacant parcel, staff is recommending adding a condition that the property legalize a lot tied to bind the lots. A lot line adjustment was already approved by the county in 1989, which allows for the dual use of the lots. The septic system serving the house already crosses the property boundaries and the lot tie will bring the site up to current code requirements. Next slide, please. With that, staff recommends approval of resolution 2204, approving the project as amended. The applicant team and myself and uh, Adrian are available for questions. All right, thank you, Tyler. Um, before we go further, any uh, disclosures? Um, John? Yeah, I uh, <clears throat> sent an email to Trevor Rusin and had a conversation with him about uh, the fact that this was a separate lot and uh, they were re the staff was relying on a section of the code that had to do with ha a house and there is no house in this lot. So I am, I never, uh, Trevor never got back to me the second time on what his conclusion was, but I'm I'm presupposing that that is why the lot tie is required. <clears throat> okay, I don't see everybody here. So, uh, Jeff. Oh, I, I, also, I drove by the site. Uh, it's covered with plastic. It looks like it's failing. Uh, and I looked at the uh, quote retaining wall, and it appears to be two inches of gunite with no steel sprayed onto the slope with no foundation. Okay, um, Jeff, any disclosure? No. Uh, and Mark? Uh, no, other than I did drive drive it and I uh, would say I concur with uh, Commissioner Maza's comments with regard to the, the condition and uh, current status of that failing wall. Uh, okay, and I, I've driven by it and looked at it, um, I guess, prior to our last schedule, so that was December. Um, nothing that other than what John just reported. Uh, okay, so let's go to the, let's see, do we have a, where are we going next? I guess we got we go back to the applicant now. Correct. For Karen York is here to speak for the applicants. Okay, welcome, Karen. Are you there? Can we hear I you? I am. I am. And welcome. thank you for hearing me. And thank you for taking the extra time tonight to hear me out, hear us out. Arnold is with me. Okay. Uh, uh, prior to the pandemic, we put our Ramble Rianta house up for sale in preparation for our retirement and its adjacent lot, the Rambla Vista lot that we're discussing. While we had several excellent and serious offers, several of the prospective buyers noted in their inspections that the aging Rampla Vista erosion controlled gunite slab, people are referring to this as a retaining wall, but it was really a gunite slab, which had been applied prior to our own ownership of the property. And we bought the property in 1976. So it existed prior to that. And that uh, it would, uh, the uh, prospective owners suggested that it be replaced. The estimates that they received were based on the same or similar specification used in replacement of the large retaining wall constructed by the city of Malibu in 2006. Those familiar with the La Costa development, specifically the hillside streets, which existed before the homes were built circa 1925, was the, uh, was, it failed. You will note that most of the properties along Rambla Vista and other streets are built on steep slopes. Okay. Few, if any, have any retaining walls. Even though there has been no evidence of slides or land movements and no indication that removing the 
broken granite erosion control slab, which had existed prior to our ownership, would create a problem. It was deemed in the best interest of our goal to sell both properties that we explore replacing it. Once we undertook this process, we were informed that a variance was required because of the height required. All plans and studies to support this proposed project have been reviewed and approved. At this time, we have a serious buyer who has asked us to complete the permit process prior to entering into final negotiations. Thus, we have done our best to accommodate him and the city's requirements. Everybody in the city, including Lauren and Yolanda, Tyler, everybody has been fantastic in helping us through this process, especially me, a layperson, trying to expedite her own project, which probably was a bad idea. <laughs> to this end, we have invested in utilizing highly qualified and experienced professionals familiar with Malibu geology, La Costa geology, construction requirements. And in addition, the city's consultants have been extremely helpful, and I thank them very much for their service. So that is my introduction to how we came to this place. Uh, and I did speak with Tyler earlier, who, who uh, informed me only this evening that there was going to be a condition about rejoining the lot, the rejoining the lots, which we had uh, separated many, many years ago. I can't remember when, the 80s, 1980s. Uh, you should know, by the way, that the house was always on two lots. We just took it from a vertical uh, division to a horizontal division at that time. At any rate, um, uh, that's our story. Yep. And uh, I, I know I would like to address the issue of the um, rejoining the lots. Uh, my initial reaction was that probably might not be a bad idea, but then I began to think about it, and Arnold and I discussed it. We, when we, when the wall, when the large retaining wall was built on Rambla Vista by the city and FEMA way back in 2005, we invested a lot of money. They required us to plan a house for that lot, a buildable house consistent with the requirements at that time to design a house that was buildable so that they would not have to condemn the lot as unbuildable once they built the large retaining wall that exists there now. And we did, we spent tens of thousands of dollars. Ron Goldman was our architect and we do have a plan for that lot. I don't know if anybody will ever build that house, but we do have a plan for that house that was consistent with the requirements at that time. In addition, We've been paying taxes on that land forever and ever. And, and also there are La Costa beach rights that are currently uh, available to that lot, which has value. So in making the condition that we join the lots, we, you are, it will be causing us and our potential buyer a tremendous financial loss of value. So I ask you to consider that uh, and also to consider the fact that the, uh, that the lot and the retaining wall and the lack of the retaining wall uh, and the construction that we are proposing have no uh, effect on the Rambla Orienta house. So I hope I've made myself clear and I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Karen and Arnold. Um, you've got nine minutes and 25 minutes left. It's, <laughs> so, I, I, Are there any uh, other speakers of the public who want to weigh in at this point? There are no other speakers signed up for the item, but I'm reminded that we should check to see if anyone would like to raise hands in the Zoom meeting to indicate that they would like to speak on this topic. Mm -hmm. So is there anybody out there? Raise your hand now or forever hold your peace. I would like to say just one thing okay go ahead that, uh, that our geologist mark barrett is present at the meeting if you have any questions oh okay great thank you mark, um, mark has his I hand up I by the way oh i don't see a hand okay yeah mark uh, barrett has his hand up let's call him into the meeting and uh, put him on the time the same time as them yeah he's he's on their same clock 
<laughs> yeah, I did not have my hand up. Oh, but I'm didn't? here to answer questions now. Okay. Oh, yep. sorry. It was my it was my cursor. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Anyways. Okay, I don't see any raised hands, so we have finished with the public speakers for this. Your cur your cursor is yellow. Um, oh. Okay, uh, John, first hand up. Yeah, uh, I have a question, Tyler. Um, <clears throat> I don't quite understand why the the two six footers don't work. Could you show us that again and explain it? Sure. I should interject here. I, I'm the one who, prior to the last meeting, I said, hang on, they have the 14-foot limit there. Why not split it into two walls? There was no suggestion that two walls would need to add up to no more than 14. The thought was if they needed 17, they could have, you know, an eight-foot wall and a nine-foot wall or or whatever, and it'd still be within the... the uh, right. For, 14 uh, allowable limit, though, for retaining walls in the La Costa Overlay District. It's not a per wall number. It's a, a total it, height, it, regardless it of how many. It says total height. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't say per wall. Okay. The total of vertical height uh, dimension, so or or a cut. So the total cut cannot exceed the the, the fourteen feet of of the retaining wall. Okay. And and my question was when I drove around and when I got out and walked it actually, it didn't seem seventeen feet high. It was more gradual slope than farther up the road and I couldn't figure out why it had to be so giant along the road like that instead of staggered up the hill and so that's if you could show us that diagram and sure. explain to me why or why it has and to be that way. There is a section Alex if you don't mind going back to uh slide the second third to last I believe I'll just add on top of that, it, it seems like the slope is pretty gradual and that I, my question, basically piggybacking with John is, wouldn't it actually require more grading to put a single tall vertical wall in because you'd have to backfill it with a bunch of fill that you wouldn't have to do if you had walls staggered up the hill? Then you'd be going more with the contour of of, of what's existing there now. And as they said before, I, I think they actually said, it's not a wall, it's a gunite slab. So yeah. we're talking about actually putting a lot of fill back in there. And as I, believe... I, I want to add another little question in here, which may bear on this. And that is, it doesn't seem to me that with a 17-foot wall, there's any access at all to this property. Unless you have an elevator or something, so where, where, how could you access this property with a seventeen-foot wall? Whereas if you had two walls, you might be able to have a, a driveway in between or something. So that's that's my question. That's a lot of questions. Okay, <laughs> yeah, we'll try we'll try to do our our best here. Um, so as you see there in the uh, section there, you know the seventeen and a half feet. There's like a two-foot freeboard because there's that V-ditch there. Um, and I believe, if I recall, Janelle explained that 17 and a half feet was the tallest point. I think at, at all points, it's uh, not exactly 17 and a half feet, uh, but there is that two uh, two feet of freeboard there. Um, and then in terms of the, the cut, I tried to display it there. So in order to do that little, you know, two wall set, you'd have to, you know, cut back into the slope. So it would require further grading than just a replacement of the uh, original wall there. Uh, yeah. And then- I'm sorry, what I, what I see on site is a slope that recedes fairly gradually. It's, I mean, it's not, you know, you wouldn't want to slide down it, but it, it just seems like what you have shown here on the schematic of what the uh, ground level is at the top it, the actual slope is closer to the yellow horizontal going back up. It's much closer. It's it it goes up from from street level and just kind of goes up at an angle. So, but the there was a wall already there. The the green line represents a wall that was already existing. Uh, mm -hmm. And then if you want, we can have we can have the geologist that they have, Mark uh, Barrett, uh, yeah. way in here. Uh, um, yeah, the, the, the other thing to keep in mind is the fact that there is a very steep slope above this wall. 
And as they're showing there, that's a two to one slope. Um, now, the other thing uh, you should look at um, here is that this, the, the yellow lines are not really, you know, um, I guess representative uh, of, of, I guess that shows a 14 foot wall, but um, if, you, if you were to split it seven, seven, I suppose, is that, is that correct, Tyler? Yeah, yeah, that's what I try to show. Um, and and the the problem is is that there he, there's no way uh, for that two to one slope at the uh, top of the yellow line to ever daylight uh, with the very top of the slope. There's going to be a lot of grading at the top. They're going to have to skim the top of that slope pretty far out in order uh, for a wall that's less than uh, the height that they're requesting. Um, and so there's just just no way to to structurally do that. Okay, I'm 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 sorry, but this looks like it could well be the truth behind the existing wall that the 17 or however tall the existing wall is to the west. That's you know straight and tall, and I could I could see that the slope uh, the the fill behind it does come down close to the top. But where we're doing the replacement here, there's much less mass. Um, and if we're saying a, a full vertical wall was lost and fell down, then clearly a bunch of material has been carted away or was washed away in the rain. I don't know, but it's 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 basically empty behind that space now. It's a much more sort of you know gradual slope up. So yeah, there is know. there is no seventeen foot wall there. No. Yeah. Let, let's have the let's have the geologist way because again I I verified this with Janelle. And I, I asked these questions, right? We don't want to just grant a variance if they don't need it. And so yeah. I was trying to avoid the variance if we could, uh, but it was it was needed based on their calculation. So if we could have Mark Barrett, please uh, weigh in on the slope. Or, or do yes. we want do we want Lauren first? We also have Lauren Doyle. Yeah, that we also have uh, city staff on board too. I, I don't know who first. Maybe well, hmm. any anybody have a choice? Mark or Lauren? Let's let's start with Mark because he's got the basic stuff, and then go to Lauren. To... Sure, yeah, that sounds like sure. a plan. That's a plan. Yeah, so, go ahead. Right. So, yeah. So there was a gunite slope, and it was it was a near vertical slope there, mm -hmm. and so there was some undermining. Part of the failure, um, Craig, was because some of the material was eroded behind it. Okay, mm -hmm. so you do have some failure there, but in in essence, in the section that I drew through there is is sub vertical. Okay, it's very steep. But I mean, right now it's it's sort of a hill with plastic on it and sandbag mm -hmm. that, that right. kind of goes up. Right. Yeah. But I'm saying that 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 cut that was there, that that gunite against that cut was nearly vertical. But you're and saying that that went up 17 feet. It looks like it's only it, at the highest point, probably pretty close. Yeah, it's probably yeah. not quite 17 because we're showing freeboard, and that one didn't have freeboard. Well, it was a it was a gunite slope. When mm -hmm. I blocked it, it wasn't even straight up. It was just gunite sprayed on a slope. And and it didn't appear to be more than about six or eight feet tall on the on the roadway. Yeah. Oh no, it's taller than that. Well, all the way up to the top, but I'm saying mm -hmm. ten feet from the roadway, there's no way it's fifteen feet. Yeah. Right, but we're replacing it right at the roadway, so that's the highest point. Yeah, I'm. I'm. At, well, first, my first question would be: the gunite. If I think there was a picture somewhere, and maybe I saw it on Google Maps or something, but um, the gunite appears to be only a couple inches thick, and it, and it's curved. It it goes up the hill. It's not straight up and down. Um, it's got no steel in it. It appears to be more erosion control uh, than a wall, but it's definitely not straight up. Um, well, that's right, but it was, but it's pretty. It, even though it wasn't exactly straight up, it was very steep. Um, so, I mean, I think what 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 I feel like is happening here is that you're going to build a tall, straight wall and backfill it. And this would be a question. It's like what. There's a lot of empty space behind it now. Well, the well, it must, yeah, but it's not that much empty space because of the, the narrowness of, or the, the steepness of that previous cut. So based on based on our based on our um, our section and our and, and the and the topo that we have, it this is what we need to do. 
and and to finish the sentence that you'd be basically creating a buildable lot where there isn't one now by by backfilling up a more flat pad. So that's I, I would like to interject, um, commissioners. Please. This is Lauren Doyle here, um, and and I actually observed for the city for the public works department the the original failure around the corner, right of of the Gunite slope. So I have personal knowledge of the failure in the past. And I would like to direct you to, if you want, and I I can't get it up on the screen, but um, if you go to on base and you go look at the geotechnical map of um, Mark Barrett's report of GCI's report, you'll see where the wall is located and you'll see the, the actual surveyed elevations and you'll see See that what he's saying is true, not very far back from the edge of the road. The road in this location is at about elevation 169.4, 169.5, and then very shortly back behind there, it's up at 185, just a, a short distance back. So it's a, it's a fairly steep slope, and the driveway already exists, Commissioner Maza, to the that there is a there's a drainage easement and i think the access is somewhere else so you're not creating uh commissioner hill you're not creating an area for a buildable lot um they're trying to conform to a two to one slope behind and make it a reasonable slope that comes down into the drainage swale behind that behind that wall and i mean Trust me, if they could make the walls shorter, they would, because it's not to their advantage to pay huge amounts of money for lots of uh, structural material that they don't need, that is hard to get, and is has risen ridiculously in price over the last year or two. Well, so um, I, that, that's my commentary. I, I agree with, with Mark. Uh, I have been involved in the comment in, in discussions with Janelle, um, the structural engineer of Oana Engineering and, and Tyler, and we've all had these discussions about making sure that there's proper survey for control. And um, so I, I just want to say I, I, this has all been worked through and thought out and, and uh, looked at. Let me ask you a question. Uh, well, first, then I want to go back to the, the two walls versus the one wall. But when I looked at the GIS, not the GIS, yeah, the GIS, um, the lot, as Karen described, was divided horizontally instead of vertically. It was They changed the lot line, and I didn't see any way, it, it appears that the Wall to be constructed covers the whole front of the property. And I didn't see any access from the rear. Um, and I know we can't create an unbuildable lot. Um, you can't do that under the, uh, whatever that land division code is. Um, so first I'd like to know, number one, aesthetically, a step wall is better than driving next to a, freeway underpass, which is what this looks like now, uh, farther up. But can you walk me through why a step wall doesn't work and a straight up wall does? Or two walls versus one, somebody? And then I'd like to see a plot plan so we can see where the, where the access is, because I don't think we're going to prove an unbuildable lot. Well, if they're joined, I guess we can. But um, uh, it's, to, to answer your question about the step walls, I think we already answered that question. There's no way to do that without a variance. So no, uh, we're getting a variance here anyway. There's no. I, I, I understand. So you can yeah. you can. Uh, it's a lot more cost to the property owner. Um, and again, we typically don't get into redesigning the projects, but it, it is possible. Uh, for them to build two walls, um, and uh, each wall would be slightly higher than seven feet. They would probably be eight, eight and a half feet each, 
um, and they would be able to uh, make that work. The overall height of that uh, would be higher than the 17 feet because as you go back into the slope, um, you have to increase the height to accommodate for the increase in the slope behind it. So it is feasible, you can do it. It'll uh, consist of a higher wall and a lot more cost to the property owner. And, and that might not be something they're, they're willing to do. Um, now, as far as access, um, I think it's important to know that there was a lot line adjustment that was approved by the city in uh, uh, 1989, or excuse me, the county, but in 1989, uh, this is before cityhood. Um, however, um, there is, uh, we don't see that a coastal development permit was issued. Um, so it's partially done, I suppose. Um, and so uh, they also have septic system that goes across the property line, uh, which is based on our code, uh, does require a lot, uh, a lot tie. And that's the reason why we were thinking the lot tie, um, uh, you know, would be something the property owners would, would consider. But, um, mm -hmm. but, but the other part of this is that the, they're in uh, the La Costa Overlay District, and they are both parcels uh, are under the same um, uh, downhill uh, development, um, meaning that it was presumed at that time that the two function as one as one lot as they had been uh, for all these years. Um, if they ever want to develop the property that's on the yeah, on the slope side or on the on the bottom of the slope, uh, they would have to, uh, you know, request an update to the code and change the zoning in order for the the upslope requirements to then be applicable to that property. Um, and then they would at that point have to come up come up with a design that would work for them. Now, is it feasible to develop the property? Uh, only time can tell. But are you telling me that the the lot line adjustment never became effective because when I look on the city's GIS, it looks like it is. Uh, the, the the local approval uh, granted the lot line adjustment, but in 1989, uh, they would have required a a coastal development uh, approval for that same lot line adjustment to be uh, uh, you know to be finalized, and that second part was was never taken by so, uh, the owners. Can you show us? what the what the two parcels look like together do you have a do you have a, a, a site plan that shows us which way it's divided there is there uh, is a, a map on on base that uh, lauren called out oh i guess you can't really see it but if you get up on on base you you can get a sense of what that looks like that shows the dotted yeah. line shows the septic tanks on the other side etc yeah but my question, the is, my question is we're we're trying to there's two reasons why the lot has to be tied, and 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 Patrick can go through that too, I assume, because Trevor went through it. Uh, Trevor made an opinion. Uh, how can if we don't know which lot is which, how can we grant a CDP on one lot where we don't know where it is? So. Uh, is it divided vertically or horizontally legally? No, no the, you're saying you don't know. The, the, the plants show the two parcels. Yeah. Uh, same with the tax assessor shows the two parcels. It, it does show the the boundary that divides the two um, the two properties. Um, it's, Where it's, is that? Do, do, can you tell? It's, it's it's horizontal. So there's a north lot and a southern lot. Um, I believe I have a, a site plan in my presentation slide. Yeah, uh, two or three. Is, is, I, John, 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 stop for a second. Um, Tyler, please bring that up. Dennis, I see you're here. I'm, I'm confused about whether you're supposed to be here or not. Uh, you're muted now. You're muted, Dennis. Um, I thought he was yeah. out of the room, but 
I was yeah. Yeah, he, he was out of the room. One of you guys must have um, hit the admit button. Oh, okay. Um, okay. While Tyler's bringing that up, uh, Jeff's had his hand up for a while. Let's let's hear what you've got to say there. Right. This was a fairly uh, urbanized area, part of town uh, in that particular area and in the, at that particular point in time, I mean. And um, do you have any knowledge of whether uh, this was considered a Calvo exemption zone, Adrian? Because if it was considered a Calvo exemption zone, uh, there wouldn't have been a requirement for uh, coastal development approval of a lot line adjustment. Um, I, I I don't know. I don't know. Well, but you would have uh, have made the request at the time. And and quite frankly, we we were doing that research today, so we haven't really finalized our research. Um, so it is possible that a Calvo exemption may have been granted by the county. Um, when the lot line adjustment was issued, we would have well, to do the research. No, on no that. the Calvo exemptions were granted or and established by the Coastal Commission. They're not. It wasn't subject to having an individual application for it. And if if the if the assessor's parcel lines show uh, the the lot lines being where they are, then that means that uh, once the once the county regional planning granted the lot line adjustment. Uh, the cross deeds transferring title would have been recorded because that's the only way you get the assessor's parcel straightened out. So uh, worst case, what you have is a lot line adjustment, which has been completed, is subject to a claim by the Coastal Commission, uh, possibly, uh, that uh, we haven't got a coastal development permit. Uh, I mean, this is, this, is, this is all over Malibu, this stuff goes on. Yeah, so this site plan um, shows the property line. It, it, I don't know if you can see it, but it's the, it's the long line with uh, two dashes uh, in between. Just underneath the, the two story residence there. Mm -hmm. yeah, where, it's, it's, where the existing pits are, right above them? Yeah. Uh, no. Is yeah, it that right one? above existing pits. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, now let me ask you a question. We're putting a wall all along the boundary of that property on the, on Rambla Vista. There'll be a wall all the way up to the next street, Rambla Oriana or wherever it is. And it's going to be 14 to 17 feet high. How do you get to the property? Well, there's no, there's well, no way you can that's, that's, that's for the property owners to figure out, not not us, uh, as to how they can design the property to be developed. Again, if they choose to do that, or if they can even do that, because as we were saying before, um, the lot line adjustment may, add, may have already uh, combined the two properties. Um, so we, they have, they are abutting the street. Um, and so when lots, are subdivided. That's all they're required to do is to have to have um, uh, connections to a public street, which this does. Uh, it's well, up to it, them to figure out how they they develop in the future. If that's is that's you know in their future. Well, part of the part of the uh, whatever that law is called the, the, about dividing lots and stuff says you may not create an unbuildable lot. Here we are, unless these are joined, and I, and I don't have any problem if they're joined. Unless they're joined, there's no physical way you can drive a car straight up a 17-foot wall. It's not possible. Even if you have a, 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 a hovercraft. Um, He's talking so, about, you're talking about the Subdivision Map Act. Yeah. Okay, so in this case, I don't have any problems at all if they're joined. If they're not joined, I don't know how we can approve this. We are walling off a piece of property that has zero access if we wall it off. Yeah, the the, the subdivision map act only applies if you're creating a lot. The, the yeah. properties have already been created, um, and they can again if they need the wall for the for the protection of their uh, improvements there. Um, which is what they're asking for. Uh, that's that's supposed to be for you. However, they choose to develop that property is up to them. And we've seen some very difficult properties to develop. Now, is it is it 
you know, cost effective to do that. That's, that's, you know, I guess for the, for the property. Well, owners, my question know. is, could the city give a permit for a driveway through a retaining wall? They can, they can later design their driveway uh, that would allow them to remove portions of that retaining wall and have like a, 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 a subterranean garage and then build on top of that. That's, that's an option that they'll, you know, they can, they can uh, uh, pursue if that's, if that's what they want to do down the road. Okay, but there was another reason why this got forced to be joined. Uh, the second second question is, oh man, my, I'm getting tired. Uh, well, John, put it on pause. Do, does, yeah. do other people have questions too? We, get, we can get back to John. Anybody else? Yeah, I, I have a question. I can't see everybody. I, I have a couple. I'm sorry, questions. I have a question. Yeah, I, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, they, they Apparently, there was a lot of discussion that went on that was prior to this hearing about the need for the lot tie. Uh, and I take it that that's the provision in the municipal code or perhaps in the LIP that says that you can't put an improvement on a lot unless there's a primary dwelling on it. Is that the provision we're talking about? Yeah. Uh, somewhat. Uh, it, yeah. It, not, not quite uh, the provision uh, you're, All right, you're so, talking well, about. Then, what, I guess my question is, what is the basis for for the demand for the uh, for the decide for the decision that the lot tie is the solution? So the, which, the, which which ordinance are we talking about? We're talking about uh, exemptions uh, from a coastal development permit, and the exemption that was used uh, for this project is one that says improvements to existing single family residences. All right. Uh, which uh, goes on to say certain things that are typically associated with. I got uh, it. I know it by heart. Yes. Okay. Okay. And that's that's the question I asked Trevor, and that's was the answer he came back with. Um, I, so if this were done, excuse me, I'm sorry, John, but if this were done as a CDP, uh, rather than a uh, rather than an administrative plan review, um, that issue would go away. Yes. Okay. Now, I, I, I thought of my question. Sorry for being dingy, but this is called a replacement retaining wall. And it doesn't appear to be replacing a retaining wall. Uh, spraying gunite, too bad Dennis isn't here, but spraying gunite on a slope doesn't retain anything except keeps water out. There's no structural strength to it. So does that have anything to do with, with this application? Because this application is for a replacement rather than uh, anything else. So if you're not replacing a retaining wall, are we doing the right findings and all that kind of stuff? Well, I, if I, I don't could know. just. Yeah, go ahead, Lauren. Uh, this, Lauren, I, I just want to comment. Uh, the wall around the corner that, that was that was placed in in 2006 used to be that that whole area was all gunite as Karen said and at the time it was placed a long time ago that was one of the ways that they thought that you could hold things in place and there's bedrock underneath that but what it was originally holding in place was just kind of surficial soil and and the surficial soil on top of the bedrock um so mm -hmm. it was retaining but it was retaining a shallow thin veneer of soil but if i walked in and said i want to put up a retaining wall i'm going to spray my hill with gunite you'd laugh at me wouldn't you well standards change so yeah, so at I'm the saying. time when this thing was placed commissioner mazna it was it was to retain the soil on the slope now um, and, and so basically what's happening is they're just kind of finishing the job and extending the wall around now to the portion that didn't fail in 2005, but is now undergoing distress. But in 2005, FEMA got a CDP for a new retaining wall. They didn't get a replacement of gunite. And, and I was around at that time. Uh, it was a big deal. 
Um, John, what's the implication of what you're? My, my question is: We're asked to approve, and I'm not trying to stall anything. I'm just saying we're after re, we're asked to replace a retaining wall, which isn't a retaining wall. So what's the, the, my question the, is: Does it make a difference? And this is to Adrian. Does it make a difference if this application is for a replacement or for a new? None. Okay. That's the answer to my question. Um, I still believe that you can't, you cannot. Well, the other reason is why we have to tie the lots, but I still believe you cannot create an unbuildable lot. Uh, okay, Jeff. Yeah, my question's for Karen. Can you unmute? Unmute Karen, please. Karen, I'm you... unmuted, okay. and I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, okay, Karen, the the uh, the idea, the explanation for the requirement of a lot tie is because of the. Uh, manner in which this application has proceeded. It's proceeded as an administrative plan review under the municipal code rather than a coastal development permit. Um, and the your resistance to the idea of a lot tie uh, makes me want to ask you uh, if your resistance to the lot tie is strong enough that you would rather uh, go back and pursue this this construction under a coastal development permit uh, rather than proceeding under the current application for an administrative plan review. If you go under a coastal development permit, the, the statutory reason for why the lot tie is required is apparently going to go away. Well, um, it's getting late. Did you understand what that what I said there? I, I don't really understand uh, I, as far as I'm concerned, I would not have even begun this process uh, at all. Uh, there was no land movement. There was no, uh, there was no uh, mudslides. Right. I'm, I'm only doing this to accommodate, to make the, uh, the whole property, both properties saleable. Right. The people, the uh, potential owners are asking, can we, do the, you know, can we protect that slope uh, between Janelle and everybody that I talk to and all my consultants says there's only one way to protect that slope and that's with this wall. If I didn't have to do it, I wouldn't do it at all. No, no, I, I understand that. And, and it's not, <laughs> my question is really not directed to the, whether or not you put up a wall or not. My question has more to do with the question of whether the two lots get tied together because uh, having one lot uh, is not the same as having the two lots. If there is a financial hit to that, and probably okay. your buyer is going to say there's a financial hit to that. Uh, but the only way that I can see to preserve the two lots and avoid tying them together is to abandon this administrative plan review and recommence under as a coastal development permit. And my question is whether that interests you or whether you want to proceed with the administrative plan review that you've now brought this far along, even though that would require uh, mm -hmm. the existence of a lot time. Okay, our Arnold is uh, sitting with me. We're consulting here. If you want to, huh? yeah, go ahead, speak. speak. He's speaking now. Counselor? Hi, Arnold, speak up. Okay, the problem I have is, uh, and this depends on the buyer. We have a tenant in there who's going to buy it. Uh, I don't know whether, uh, if, if we were to agree to at this point, uh, and then uh, uh, can we still, does that preclude us from going through the longer process if it turns out that doesn't work for us? Or can we you delay mean if it? it turns, if it doesn't work for you from the point of view of the buyer? Yeah, not to just a buyer, but it doesn't, you know, economic, we have a couple of things involved here. We've got, we've got beach club rights to both lots. I don't know right. whether we lose, whether we're losing one of them and they're quite valuable these days. So you're, you know, you're talking about a hit from a, a couple of different directions. Uh, I take it, the sense I get is that, that, uh, 
uh, uh, either got to agree to the condition or what? What's or pass on it, make no decision tonight, and give us a chance to take a look at it? Uh, no, I don't think so. That's that's probably not viable to uh, to go forward. Well, first of all, I'm not sure whether we have four votes to or three votes to approve the uh, uh, the variance to build a wall at all. But but assuming that we do, uh, I think it's probably uh, if it, if if the vote is positive, it's going to have to include the lot time. And uh, so that means you've kind of uh, tested the flashbulb by firing it off. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I can interject yeah. here. Oh, I can, interject. Can, I, can I say one thing too, please? If, if um, we agree to the lot tie, will that get it passed? I don't know. Oh, yeah. we, don't, we don't know yet. We don't know uh, yet. So now, are we Arnie, saying let me, can I mention something? Um, number one, we could continue and you could think about it. Number two, uh, one of the other problems for having the lot tie is your septic tanks on the other property. So do you, is, and this is a question for Tyler, is there a place for a new septic tank and the redundancy required on the house lot? And if not, you got time anyway. Um, so there's a lot of things to think about. Um, and then, and then there's the fact that how do you sell a lot you can't get to? And then there's another factor you may want to check, and that is, are you sure that La Costa takes away your rights when you join lots? You're not eliminating it, you're just joining it. Um, they may let you sell it. I know plenty of people have unbuildable lots in La Costa. They, they bought just for the membership. If, you know, if, quite frankly, I would tie the lots together if we can get this resolved tonight, you know. Uh, right, okay. I That's would agree to that if we get it resolved. You know, this is... Uh, do you want to do a straw vote on that? Well, let me, let, let, let's put a pin in that, and, and I have a couple questions still that kind well, of go to... I do too, so... Whenever, okay, well, okay. I'll take one, and then and then we'll go back to Jeff if we can trade turns here. Um, well, question one, Lauren... Just, I'm just curious, how long, how recently have you gone out and actually looked at the site? For Lauren Toyel. Yeah, um, I, I looked at it um, via Google Street Map. So whatever the, whatever the photos are that are there. So I haven't been out physically on the site, but um, when we were discussing this with Janelle, um, and Mark, at one point, I was, I took a tour virtually along. So whenever the last Google Street Maps was. Okay. There. Well, as and, we're talking. And, okay. and I'm looking at, I'm, I'm basing my comments on the, um, on the heights off the maps that are presented and the surveys uh, presented in the reports. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, as we're talking, I, I will look at that to see if if what is on that is what I see in real life there, because they might be different. Well, um, and just so you know, I, it depends on when she looked at the Google Street Maps, because the the one I looked at three days ago is all covered with plastic, so it looks like it's pretty recent. It was it was since it's been raining. Well, yeah. Well, so but maybe that's the question. How recently have you looked at Google, Lauren? Um, it was, if, if they're covered with plastic now, they were covered with plastic at the time I looked at them as well. And that okay. was probably, uh, two, three months ago okay. when we were preparing for, for doing the final building plan check approval. Okay. And now I guess this is, this question is for you also, how far is this from the known slide that uh, we, we looked at a house, uh, I can't remember the street name, but it was, um, a little bit closer to the ocean uh, a couple of years ago. Um, does any, can you? It, well, are you talking that, about the Calle del Barco Assessment District and slide? The, yeah. Yes. How, how close? It, it's one of the, that? it's the assessment district landslide. Yeah. Is this? Yeah. Is, this is, this is quite a bit of ways from that. Now I okay. didn't do the geotechnical review for this. 
um, Ali Abdul Haq was the geotechnical engineer and Christopher Sexton um, both it was the CEG that did this. And that was, of course, always one of the first things we look at is how close we are. But I used to be the assessment district engineer, and there's no way that that slide affects this lot. Okay. They're um, too far away. And then this is a question maybe for, uh, th th thank you, Lauren, for um, where's Patrick? Um, well, okay, I'll save my question. I see Mark has his hand up. We'll, I'll come back to mine. Let's go Mark and then we'll Jeff and then back to me. Mark? Yeah, thanks. I mean, this might be a dumb question, but being the new guy, I get to ask dumb questions, right? Mm -hmm. So it, is, this, this is probably uh, for staff. It, is this situation a public safety hazard? I mean, is there, isn't there a sidewalk that runs along there? It's a public street. Could it be considered a, a, a public safety hazard? And if so, uh, could it be approved under an emergency permit to be repaired and get away, you know, get around some of this stuff? So typically we don't issue uh, an emergency coastal development permit on projects um, unless for one, the project is not exempt from a coastal development permit. And then two, if it's a true emergency, meaning that there's no way to uh, allow time for a coastal development to be processed and they need to fix the issue now. Um, and so in this case, this wall um, uh, is in distress, like uh, Lauren said, but it's been in distress for a while. So it could hold up for as long as it needs to uh, to allow the coastal development permit to be processed, and therefore would not qualify for an emergency uh, CDP. Uh, I would concur with Adrian. Um, I we if if he came to us and asked us if this was an ECDP, we would say no. You also, by the way, ECDP or emergency, you have to get a real CDP someday. It doesn't save you getting a real CDP. The root cause of all this, right, is is whether um, a, we're going to make them come back for a CDP or we're going to ask them to to do the um, lot tie. Is that correct under this application? That's one of the issues. Okay, let me ask a question. No, hold on just a second. I don't know whether Craig can't see me or not, but yeah, I'm no, waiting let's... my turn here. And he called. He said that after. Yeah, we went to Lauren to coming back to me, right? It's your turn, Jeff. Go ahead. So my question is for Tyler. Uh, you know, there's 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 tie agreements and there's tie agreements. We're not talking about uh, merging the two lots, are we? Because that requires a permit too, right? Right. And so what 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 provisions have, have you got in mind for the lot tie agreement? It, it, it's a Just covenant that, not, that they can't be sold separately. It, it's a covenant agreement that they would have to remain. Uh, they would have to remain uh, together, provided that there is improvements um, that th that are shared between the two properties. They're going to have to remain together. Uh, physically, I, I don't think they're going to be moving apart. What, <laughs> what do you mean they're going to have to remain uh, they, together? They, well, they they have to be maintained as uh, under one ownership uh, while those improvements are there. Uh, and the improvements you have you're referencing are what the the Septic, septic system, septic, septic septic system. And, and this retaining wall. Um, but the retaining wall wouldn't be, wouldn't be, uh, no part of the retaining wall uh, is on the other property, right? Uh, is on the, is, is on the uphill property. Okay. Uh, that, so that they would correct. have to, the, the only thing we're talking about is it would have to remain under one ownership. Correct. Right. Okay, Correct. that's not so onerous. All right. Okay, John. Um, if if I made a motion to approve this with the lot tie and it passed, um, I will say it didn't pass. Arnold was worried about it didn't pass. Okay, if it didn't pass, they can come back with a CDP anyway, right? So there's no they hard no could, foul. They could go to the city council. Yeah, they could go to city council, but they could they could do the alternative, which is if they didn't want the lot tie, they'd have to do anyway. So 
if we approved the lot tie and approved the wall, then they're happy. If if we don't, they got to get a CDP anyway to get around it. So or go to city council. Um, so why don't we vote on 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 the lot tie? I, I don't see why. That's what Arnold was saying. He doesn't want to. If right. he, so he's we, for we, it, we, if we can get if it's done and we got a lot tie. Oh, okay. And, okay. I tell you what. If if that's where you're, if that's the direction you're going, I will move the staff recommendation with the addition that uh, that prior. Do you have the language for the addition uh, for the condition, uh, Tyler, or do you want me to make it up as I go? Yeah, we, I didn't write it specifically. So if you want to, okay. The idea something. would be that the property would have to remain under under the same ownership for the for the life of the improvements, including the septic system and the uh, and the uh, wall. Uh, and I suggest, I suggest that we make we make the motion to have the city attorney come back with the lot tie. Okay, uh, that suits me. We're mm -hmm. not real estate lawyers. All right, that's my motion. That, that, I'll, that, I'll that, 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 that prior to uh, uh, that, that let's see, that's that the the, the approval will be conditioned upon. The applicant agreeing uh, or signing uh, a lot tie agreement as prepared by the city attorney. That Correct. works. I'll second that. Okay, we've got a motion on the table. I have two more questions. One of them is for Lauren. I should have asked this sooner. Uh, can we open Lauren, please? Her microphone. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I uh, I have full control of my own muting and unmuting. Oh, oh excellent! <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Um, I just as kind of a double check, but as comparing one tall wall versus two walls with some setback, would there be any significance in terms of uh, potential catastrophic failure at, with respect to what's going, the houses on the ocean side of Rambla Vista? If it's a taller wall, does it fall harder and hit those houses worse than if it's two two staggered walls that, you know, crumble in a less horizontal distance? And they address that issue in the review, not the issue of one wall crumbling versus the other, but the overall issue stability and and deflection of the wall. Mm -hmm. And there's no, there's no downside to the one wall versus two walls okay. um, from that standpoint. Okay, just wanted to double check. And then my my last question is not for you, it's for the city attorney. We've heard and seen news stories over the years about a, a lien by the city on some wall and for some work done here. And I just wondered, we have that requirement that uh, full ownership be demonstrated on permits. Question one is, is that requirement for that, that the applicant own the property completely? Is that just for CDPs or would that be applicable in this case? And, and then question two is, does the fact that the city has a big lien on some of this property in some manner that I'm not quite clear on, would that lien in any way uh, compromise the the ownership status? And, so the, and, and I apologize, but my internet went, went out there for a little bit earlier in the meeting. So so earlier in the item, excuse me. So if there was some lien discussion that, that, that I missed, this is, this is the first I'm, I'm hearing about that. Um, to answer your, your question, the the, the, the city basically requires that the that the applicant have the legal right to do whatever it is that they're that they're doing. So so just just the mere existence of a of a of a lien on a property, in in, in the abstract, would not necessarily say, hey, no, you 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 do not have the the legal right to do this, um, because once again, even with the lien, you as the owner still have access rights, can still be on it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so so it, does that answer that your your first question, or or, or or am I missing the mark? I, I think it answers it. Um, you didn't miss anything earlier on. This is the first time we brought it up when I said we've we've heard about it before. It's just there, it's been in the press that there's there's been or it's social media or somewhere. I don't remember where I heard it. Yeah, and and, and once again, I, so I'm gonna I'm gonna speak somewhat abstractly because I I don't want to be too specific for that issue or or anything like that. You know, with with you know anything that has a city lien on it, it's 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 unlikely that 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 the city would ever kind of 
close on that lien and, and, and really go all the way. Once again, I have no idea what, what the amount of the lien is, et cetera, et cetera. And so, so th this idea of, of this, you know, retaining wall being potentially built, depending on, 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 on your guys' action today, you know, th th if anything, that would, I don't want to be encouraged, but, but if anything, that would, that would kind of perfect and, and, and make that, that city's lien even more valuable, if that makes sense. Right. So you think our yeah. ownership code doesn't care about it. It's just a matter that, that the, the prospective buyer would inherit that obligation. John? Right. No, liens, property titles remain, liens come and go. And the, the two are not the same. Uh, okay, just the just property, to... uh, whoever you owe money to, that's their problem. Okay. Just, if you want not, clarification, the Yorks could provide clarification on that. I had this discussion with Karen. Well, I don't think this is something we should be talking about personally. We're we're not a lien holder and we're not representing the city. Yeah, I just wanted to dot the I, cross the T. Well, it's I think record we've got now. the answer that uh, it's immaterial to title. Okay, that's that that satisfies me. Okay, okay. so well, we have a me. motion on the table. Uh, any other questions or comments? No? Well, shall we call the roll then? Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Maza? Yes. Commissioner Wetton? Yes. Chair Hill? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, may I make a comment on the next item? Um, I know we, we want to hear it, or uh, you want to hear it. It's 10 after 11. There's absolutely no way we're going to hear this whole thing. Um, well, that's absolutely correct. But okay, I, I, so I, my question would be, if we open the hearing and we do take comment from the public, can we open the next hearing and take more comment from the public? Because it's 10 after 11. Mm -hmm. And I don't consider it fair to the public to start a hearing uh, at 10 after 11, expect public comment and um, yeah some may have gone home already but so uh, the other thing I want to point out is Thursday I don't know why this is this way there's a big meeting on ADUs so we're yeah. having our our meeting before the public uh, public meeting that the city has called and advertises in the newspaper so I don't mind taking uh, comments tonight as long as they can be redone when we meet again. Patrick, is there any reason we couldn't do that? No, you can you can absolutely take public comment at at both meetings. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, I I would be yeah, interested. You know, guys, it's it's very late. Yeah. I, I uh, think I think everybody here that's going to speak is going to come back at the next one. Uh, so, I mean, who, who do you have? I mean, take a look at the board. Hey, I'm fresh and ready to go. <laughs> All I can tell you is we have that made makes one of us. Ninety percent of the mistakes we make are after ten thirty. Yeah. Well, um, the, the another problem, Joyce is here. Yeah. I, if if you if you would like, um, I could do um, a four slide PowerPoint just to to provide um, some structure and and. Um, talk about what we were hoping to get from the planning commission, which I know we will not because it's late. Um, and then we get to take public comments and um, continue it uh, what, um, to the meeting. If that's, um, I could do my uh, presentation in about two minutes. I don't know if that's necessary. The, the bigger question would be whether there are any questions that any of us have brought to the table now that it would be really handy to ask you now that you could take away and have a better answer by the next minute. But, but you know what? Any of those questions we could be asking you in the meantime anyway, probably. So yes. I, yes, I we, think that that's, yeah. I mean, I have- encourage you to send us emails and questions so that when we come back on, um, we'll be, we'll have answers for you. Um, yeah, I feel I feel really bad about all the people who've been sitting here for hours waiting to talk on this, and I don't know. I guess I wish there was some way to, to figure out who really needs to speak now and who can wait. But I, I don't know. I, I, personally, I think everybody can wait. I I would uh, uh, 
All I would ask is uh, if we're going to do a continuance, I'm getting pretty tired of having a meeting every week with thousands of pages, and and I just hope we keep it in normal order for a while. Yeah, I I was under. I, the, I have other things to do in life, you know. I was under the impression when we continued this that it would be more in the nature of a dedicated meeting on this, and we ended up getting a bunch of other stuff attached to it. So that that might be kind of. I mean, not that we couldn't have like one or two little things attached, but maybe this should be more of the the highlight of the meeting rather than the afterthought. One possibility yeah, would be continuing to a special meeting. That just oh, said, yeah. come to a meeting to our life, you know. Uh, then I think the next important? the next couple of agendas I think will be pretty full. Well, I think I think we need to continue it and and let staff find how they're going to come up with enough room for us to talk about it. One of the real problems is that this is I think this is the second or third time that I've worked up all my questions on this. Yeah particular yeah. thing and and I, I was sitting here today thinking gee this is different than the one I did last time. I found my notes that I did the last meeting that stuck under some boxes over there and we got to looking at those and oh yeah well they did make some of the changes I suggested but but um yeah I, I it, we need to have a, a dedicated meeting where we can talk about this because there's a lot of we're going to have a lot of public comment and we're going to have to go through it line by line and that takes forever and so uh, I'm, well, my okay. suggestion is we, uh, my motion is that we continue this item to a date uncertain, and we'll just have to talk to staff about when we can get it in in a way that uh, I'll second that. Uh, okay. Tyler, Eaton, oh, looks like he's waving thing is, his hand. I'm sorry, my light's like trying to come back oh. on. But um, <laughs> the only thing I was going to say is we get we the, did get the clapper. Know, we did a lot of public outreach this time around. Um, we sent a, a notice to every homeowner in the city. Uh, we did a two-week ad in the uh, Malibu Times. So if we do continue this to a date uncertain, uh, you know, we most certainly can do that again. Uh, I don't know if Adrian wants to weigh in on that, but just to, just to throw that out there, there was a significant amount of public outreach uh, so, that was done for this meeting. Yeah, we got a lot of material in by mail or by email, and I'm sure there are people. Tyler, to... Tyler, wasn't that done for Thursday's meeting, those ads? So, the one I read oh, was for Thursday. I'm not sure of a Thursday meeting, uh, Commissioner Rosa. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought you were referring to something else, like a different uh, jurisdiction. Yeah, there, there is no Thursday meeting on ADUs. Yeah, not it, for the it city. Was tonight. I was just saying, you know, maybe if we can continue to a date certain, then the people who are here, you know, we don't have to go through this whole uh, noticing process again. I'm okay with that if you want to give us a date, Adrian. Yeah, give us a the, date. The <laughs> potential uh, special meeting dates would be January 27th or January 31st. No, no, no. I'm not interested in a special meeting. I want I want a meeting on a biweekly, regular basis. Uh, we're 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 getting killed. So you're talking about you're talking about March sometime, assuming that the next two February dates are already packed. Whatever it is, I, I can't March do two thousand pages a week. Yeah, I just can't do it. And those are noticed. There's no way this could squeeze in on March twenty first, right? March twenty first, yes, it is available. Uh, it is available. Um, it's it's kind of a, I mean I, I like the idea of continuing to a date certain uh, and for it to be a regular meeting. Um, the problem is, as you experience today, is items will find their way to that agenda, and uh, the other thing is that you know we cannot uh, get all the projects done in the meetings that we have uh, because we only. You know, today we continue pretty much all the items, uh, which means that those items will then uh, have to come back, and um, and we just every every meeting for the next few months just are going to be super busy, uh, and at some point we're going to have to we're going to have to uh, have uh, special meetings. We only um, Adrian, we only continued one item this meeting, and that's this one. No, no, no. We continued no. the the three story house and the. Well, yeah, okay, well, they're, they're all right. continued, yeah. Yeah. except for this one. Well, look, uh -huh. I, 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 I know we're going to have to do some special meetings, and uh, 
it's just that having just gone through one and a short week where we had a special meeting with a lot of reading and now another meeting with a lot of reading, it's just, it is painful. So yeah. the, the, anyway, optimum, the optimum here would be uh, to do it soon enough that our brains still yes. retain some of what we've done, but late enough so that, that the pain has through. gone away. We've the, forgotten the, the pain of Alaska. That we have a bit of a break and we have time to answer some questions with staff. And so there's there's kind of a sweet spot that might be a couple of weeks out. Have we got a five have we got a five week month coming up where there's a where we have the break? This is it. This is the this, one. This is the five week month. So January thirty first would be the fifth week. Off in January. Uh, uh, so, so I, 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 I think I'm hearing everybody. Let's let's just do a regular meeting for now for this item. But like I said, we're gonna have to at some point uh, <laughs> figure out uh, other special meetings for the bottleneck that we have right now with items. Okay, okay but I, Adrian, just my opinion only. I wouldn't mind a special meeting sometime off in the future if it's a bunch of little items. We don't have to read these gigantic things and get 200 emails and all this kind of stuff. Dennis? Well, if it's this one, we've already done all we've already done all the reading. Oh, well, you haven't even started. We're going to get into some more stuff. There's a lot here. Dennis? It, isn't, isn't this really important? And shouldn't we do it a little sooner than March? We've waited three years to do this. Okay, so we had meetings three years ago on this. Yeah, well, we're down, it, it, now we're down to the nitty gritty. So uh, we haven't even started the nitty gritty. Um, I think that that that, that um, yeah, you know, I would be willing to go with January thirty first. In March. No, we, we the, January thirty first would be the fifth week, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it would. And then, and then, and then, seven days later, we have another one. I know. So I, I would say, and I think we could probably do it, but um, given the uh, recent direction from Coastal regarding exemptions, uh, we will have to revise the, you know, the ordinance that you have before you tonight, but I think we could get it done fairly quickly. I, I'm just thinking about the time of getting the packet to you for the 31st meeting. Oh my God! Their thirty-six page letter that they just sent us Friday before the holiday. Those dirty dogs. Well, you got <laughs> no. We're, we're actually still waiting. Those were comments on staff uh, on the on the uh, um, amendment. We are still waiting for the official guidance memo. It's supposed to be out. Um, they said shortly, hopefully this week. Yeah, they actually didn't have a lot of comments for the amendment. So, and then we got to go through that too. It's basically that ADUs are not exempt. They, all ADUs will require a coastal development permit, so it's a pretty easy fix. Well, I, I have another problem, which which I want you to consider, and that is, and I know we can never ask another commission to do anything, even though they can ask us. Uh, this is a public safety issue also on evacuations, and it's never been before. Mm -hmm. This public safety commission, mm -hmm. And and again, you know, you have that. I mean, it's you, you wait three years to do something, and then you got to do it in two weeks. Uh, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. I don't. All think right, John. What do you want to continue it to? I I want to continue to a regular meeting or a date uncertain. We can always have regular meetings where you have other items on it. You put this first. This is going to take six hours minimum. Okay. That's why it's got. They're going to get continued anyway. This this yeah. this would be this would be February twenty second because February seventh is uh, pr presumably has already been noticed and that can't be changed. So it'd be Tuesday the twenty second because Monday is President's Day. I I believe. Uh, let me double check with Patricia. I believe the twenty second has already been noticed. Is that the case? Mm. The notice, but we already have four to five items. Uh, there are already four to five items scheduled for the twenty second. So why don't we have a date uncertain and have staff come back at our next meeting and tell us? What because they don't want to have to send out the notices again. Yeah, yeah. We, we can if you guys want. It just costs money. <laughs> so it's up to you guys. If if there's a special meeting, I would prefer it be sometime after the seventh, not least because I have jury duty scheduled next week. But I mean, that's just me. It's it's March seventh. 
Uh, does that work for everybody? March seventh. That a special meeting or is that a is that a that would be a regular meeting? Uh, no, I'm saying I'm saying after if we wanted a special meeting, we could maybe work one in after February seventh somewhere. Uh, Honestly, as far, as far I did not. I'm I'm okay with March seventh. If, if uh, yeah, I'm okay with March seventh. I might. I have to look it up real quick. I might have a hearing. I have to go to. Yeah. <sighs> I have no life, so I'm in. <laughs> While you're looking at calendars, let me just say that in terms of how we talk about this, we've tried in the past to kind of go line by line by line, and I, I, I feel like we end up skipping around. What I'd like to try next time is to go more thematically and talk about one issue at a time, and um, and then, you know, if we need to, we can go in and do some line by at the end, but I think it's, it's more helpful to be... Uh, I don't know. It's just way, the way my brain works. That yeah, way, we, I, I, remember, Craig. This is an ordinance. You have to go line by line. You well, we have a single word, Craig. They, yeah. there um, really is. If you, if you, the, the, what it really comes down to is a fundamental question of whether, uh, whether coastal expects us, as they told us, that we need to conform to the ADU statute to the maximum extent possible, or are we going to basically keep our LIP provisions the same and call that conforming to the maximum extent possible? I mean, because that's that's sort of where we are, right? I mean, the, 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 that's the part proposed of provisions are, are, are pretty much the same as the existing LIP. But there are a lot of little details in issue areas, and, and I don't think we can get into the hearing now without actually Correct. opening the hearing. Yeah. So, yeah, no, no, no. But it's it's a legislative matter. We can chat all we want, right? Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> um, where are we on so, the schedule? So March seventh would be a is a regularly scheduled planning commission meeting. If that is the date that you're, if you don't want to schedule a special meeting, um, that would uh, not be yeah. a special meeting. It would be a regular planning commission meeting date. I'd much prefer March 7th. Yeah, um, I, 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 and I'm then, good with that. But just try to keep it as free as you can. Yeah, put everybody after this. If you've okay. got to put somebody on there, put them after this. It will get continued. Okay, so we somebody's making a motion. I move we uh, uh, continue this item to March 7th, regular meeting. And put this at the front of the agenda. Absolutely. Otherwise, we'll never hear it. Well, it's a continued item is usually right, right, already right. put in the yeah, fours. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Maza? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Wetton? Yes. Vice Chair Smith? Yes. <laughs> and Chair Hill? Uh, yes. Motion carries. And before we adjourn, I just want to request uh, that Joyce give us her contact information so we can ask questions. Yeah. Uh, can you email us all with your contact information? Yes, I will have uh, Tyler do that. Thank you. I move we adjourn. Second. Call the roll, please. I'm sorry, who seconded the motion? Me. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Commissioner Maza? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Button? Yes. Vice Chair Smith? Yes. <laughs> Chair Hill? Yes. Motion carries. And to, to all right. the public, all the public out there, uh sorry we kept you waiting so long and we well, thanks for being here and stay dedicated. And Tyler Not Joyce, uh, the yes. early you get us the er, I know you have schedules on giving out staff reports, but the earlier you give us, the more time we have to go through it. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Everybody talk to Joyce, too, if you have questions, problems, yes, whatever. Please, yeah. please send your questions in advance so we can uh, be prepared. Uh, on send, the, send those uh, cards yeah. and letters. That's right. Keep those phone calls coming in. Aloha. <laughs> stay safe. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.